<clears throat> hello? Hello, hello, what's up everybody? How's everybody doing? Sorry my, my voice is uh, completely shot, actually. I, uh, I just got back from PAX East, but we're here. We're here with tips. We're here with Stay Safe. We're here with our friend Quissy. She is our guest for today. Hopefully, hopefully my you guys aren't too put off by my uh, my, my voice being all jacked up. But um, we're glad to be here with you guys. There's been a lot of exciting news uh, over the course of the last month. One of you guys are echoing, by the way. I'm not sure who. Um, but yeah, so there's been a lot of exciting news over the course of the last month, the last few weeks. Uh, we, we've talked about it a little bit in the last episode. And we wanted to do an episode last week. But uh, I got sick, and then Stay Safe got sick, and then I went to PAX, and it, it was a whole thing. And actually, Quissy was there as well. I, I got to see Quissy as PAX, so uh, that was a lot of fun. That was really cool. Uh, so for those of you guys who don't know who Quissy is, uh, Quissy is a very long-time WoW player. She's been playing since just about the beginning, since since launch time. Uh, also a paladin, paladin, and uh, actually, you know what, Quissy, why don't you tell everybody your story, your uh, your your <laughs> kind of how you got started playing WoW. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me on. Um, I started, well, my first MMO was Ragnarok Online. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that. Um, mm -hmm. It was a Korean MMO, and it was based on Norse mythology. Um, and yeah, I, I was really young when I started playing that, but I somehow uh, got into a really good guild. I, I Probably because I just played it nonstop. Uh, um, and yeah, the, we, we got to a really good guild. The guild became like the top guild on the server. We had this alliance going with the other guilds. Uh, so we, we were pretty dominant. And then um, around 2004, when WoW was starting to come out, my guild master uh, was super interested in it. And she, well, I, I think it was a girl. I don't know. We never heard her voice. <laughs> after low, but uh, it was a she, apparently. Um, she convinced us all to port over to WoW. So yeah. um, like 90% of the guild ported from Ragnarok Online to uh, World of Warcraft. And we were on the Archimon server, which uh, was a PvP server. Not our PvP. Right. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I um, the first character that I made was a paladin. Um, I leveled as Prot to level 60 because I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't even cow. remember how long it took me. Probably yeah. probably like a month and a half, maybe. Um, and that's then- not, That's not that bad. I mean, you consider like back then, that's really not that bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I played a lot, so yeah, right. not much <laughs> Um, <laughs> So I get to 60 and I'm like super excited. I'm like, all right, Molten Core, I'm gonna raid and everything. And then find out that uh, Prot Pallies aren't wanted. So I uh, I made I <laughs> I rolled a class that could definitely not get denied in a raid, which was a dwarf priest, uh, because of fear ward, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean I I, I was ugly as sin, but um, you know sometimes <laughs> you gotta you gotta bite the bullet, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So I got into a raid group and uh, we we cleared molten core, we cleared BWL, uh, Onyxia, ZG, and. Uh, by the time AQ came out, we broke up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where I stopped raiding in vanilla. Um, yeah. And then uh, af after a little bit of time, I rolled Horde, played an undead priest. And uh, yeah, the rest is history, I guess. There you go. You know, what's kind of crazy to me is is the fact that like you guys were able to get like a whole guild together pretty much and to, to swap games like that whenever WoW came out. Yeah. Because I know whenever, whenever I was yeah. playing Dayok, like everybody was... I mean, People were just kind of like doing their own thing, and I remember people were talking about WoW potentially coming in and killing Dayok, and I was one of the people that said it probably wasn't going to happen. <laughs> but here we are, right? So no, I, I think it's uh, I think it's just really yeah. cool to see that, like how how somebody was able to go through and like be like, you know what? Hey, we're going to pick up the whole guild and go, and I was like, okay, let's do it. So it works out. <laughs> yeah, it, so. it was kind of like a, a chain reaction because like the the guild leader was super excited about it, and I remember I was hesitant at first. Um, and then I think like as people slowly started going over, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, come, yeah. the game is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, eh. even, even in 2004, people couldn't resist the fresh. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Well, even like I mean, you, you look at the, you look at the sub chart, right? Where it's the subs were, I mean, the subs were always good. If you think about like the launch, like they, they had a good amount of subs, but it, it wasn't like this colossal game until like, I guess, Burning Crusade. And, and throughout vanilla, it just you could see that the thing just was, shh. 
even Burning Crusade yeah. it was going up like that. But uh, and then yeah. before it, before it leveled off in uh, in Wrath. So I don't know, just bringing people in from other games and from other communities, and WoW really opened the doors for. Uh, people who were outside of MMORPGs, like a lot of people who played StarCraft and Warcraft to get into MMOs. It's like a lot of people, their their introduction to, to WoW was through like Warcraft 3 or, or Warcraft 2 or something like that. So Yeah, I, I think on top yeah, of that, sure. a lot of people, like their introduction just to online games in general was World of Warcraft Vanilla WoW. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like, mm -hmm. a lot of like fond memories that people have with that game as being their, like their first online experience. Mm -hmm. So, um, so guys, like I said, there there has been a lot of news. There has been a lot of news over the course of the last few weeks, and uh, a lot of it's been really good. Uh, but real quick, one thing that uh, it, it's kind of like flown on the radar, I guess, there hasn't been too much talk about it recently, is a post from Ian Hazakosis. And let me go ahead and pull this up right quick. Uh, see, does this work? It does. Okay. So there's a post here um, from Ian Hazakosis. Is it showing up? Good. It's showing up. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Um, production value. Dude. Yeah, production value. There it is. <laughs> so uh, so somebody tweeted at Ian has a co says, Ian, huge fan. Please, please make a classic WoW RP PvP server at launch, at least in one NA region, please. There will be interest, I promise. He promises. Very good. Okay, I trust him. Look at surveys. If there isn't enough people on the first server, it can be merged later, please. So what Ian has a co says is, to be clear... With that being said, no, to be clear, we have no philosophical opposition to setting up a classic RP PvP server. They don't have a philosophical opposition to it. But our priority is making sure servers have long-term healthy populations, so we'll start with lean realm lists and expand as needed, just as the 2004 launch did. Yeah. So... Oh boy. So here, here's the thing with like the no, the no philosophical opposition to setting up classic RPP for R, mm -hmm. RP PVP servers. These servers, these server types, RP PVP were added in patch 1.8, so they were there in Vanilla WoW at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, technically for the majority of Vanilla WoW's lifespan. So it's weird that they chose to exclude them. I think uh, with the initial announcement, and like uh, it, 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 it's it's kind of mind boggling to me that they that they wouldn't at least have a couple of them. I really don't understand why. Yeah. I, I think it's I think it's kind of weird as well. I mean, you're already starting with 1.12, right? Um, so I think it's kind of weird to to not just come out and and have it on launch as it is, right? So one of the things that he says that really catches my eye, right, catches my ear, um, we'll start with lean realmless and expand as needed, just as the 2004 yeah. launch did. This yeah. is something that uh, to me is actually a big concern. It's something that, you know, people who've been a part of the private server community definitely have seen. And, you know, even stay safe, you referenced it a little bit earlier, is people can't resist fresh, right? So if they're gonna go, and this did happen in retail vanilla, but it was a totally different environment. And and maybe, maybe people are gonna be different on a larger scale as opposed to just in the private server scene. Yeah. But if people go for six months, a year, whatever, right? A year, AQ patch hits, you know, I'm assuming, right? I think that's reasonable. Uh, you know, after a year or so, the AQ patch hits. You've got the 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 war effort going on. This is happening. Everything's everything's you know hustling and bustling, and then they start releasing fresh servers because the game population may happen. Like it, the population of people playing the game overall might be going up. So then they are making new servers. If they make those fresh servers, are those fresh servers going to come in and kill off servers that already exist? I don't know. I, I think that those, fresh, let's say they add new servers for Classic WoW. I think those servers will have less appeal than like a fresh private server because fresh private servers start with the bare minimum. So Molten Core and Ixia. And then it's progressive content releases, what private servers do, where right. if, they, if they add, like they did in Vanilla That's a good WoW, point. if they add new servers, like let's say at the time the AQ's out, like BWL, ZG, AQ will be out with, when there's other new servers. So That's I think a really good point. There will be less of a draw. The other thing is, dude, um, I actually looked into how many servers were there at launch, um, like day one Vanilla WoW. Mm. Only North America, only North America, by the way. Um, but there was like around 75 servers at launch North America. That's a lot of servers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 84. There you go. That's a lot of servers. And so we have to ask ourselves this question. Are there going to be more people playing day one classic WoW than there were people playing day one vanilla WoW? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think, mm -hmm. I think probably I think yes, will, right? Man. Don't you think so? So they're I gonna think have five times as much. Yeah, good. Wh whatever it is, like either more servers or higher population caps, it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. And like mm. the, the troubling thing about that tweet for me and was I guess it kind of just shows their overall philosophy for the launch. And it's kind of counter 
I mean, it's kind of the opposite of what JLM Brack said back at the classic announcement. He specifically said back in BlizzCon 2017, he said, we're trying to recreate the authentic vanilla experience, not the authentic launch experience, which is interesting to see Ian said that they're trying to kind of replicate how they release servers and how they launched back in 2004. So I'm not sure if there's a paradigm shift there or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, definitely when it comes to classics launch, I think we can all agree that the launch is going to be the biggest stage of classic ever. Uh, oh yeah. I'm, uh, yeah it, maybe so. at some point it grows, goes up, down, whatever, but, but the launch is going to be the biggest phase. So you need to have the maximum capacity at launch. And if you end up with a situation where you launch with like 80 servers, it either means one of two things, either a, you're going to have to shard extensively to be able to handle the population, like a ridiculous amount. Or B, you're going to have insanely long queue times. And I don't think anybody wants that either. Mm. So I'm not sure what their line of thinking is. I, I really don't know. But uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I would expect or I would hope that they launch more servers than, than you know they would need down the line. Well, I, I think one thing, one thing that they're very... One, one thing that they're, that they're right on is talking about how they want to... Uh, they want to make their priority to make... Their, their priority is to make sure that the servers have long-term healthy populations. I think that that's, uh, I, I think that they're right for that. I, I think that's a big concern, right? Kind of like you said, what if what if they start, servers come out, everybody's playing on launch, you have the big hype, and then it starts to, it starts to taper off a little bit, which uh, a lot of people have talked about. I think a lot of people think that's a reasonable expectation. So if that ends up being the case, then their thought process is to try and counteract that with long-term healthy populations. Like they don't want to make too many servers and then all of a sudden like, okay, now every server is dead mm -hmm. and then they have to merge. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's just another thing that's come up, right? That's just another thing that there so, is to, uh, another obstacle they have to overcome. Go ahead. Say let safe. me ask, let me ask you guys this. Like, let's say you just have a random server that hits population cap on launch day or the first couple launch days, but there's no like pre-existing community going into that server, be it like a couple of good guilds that collectively decide to play on the server. There's no streamer community. It's just a, it's just a, like a, a server full of like random players that are just in classical, right? Mm -hmm. Six months down the road, what percent of those initial pop player population there, they capped out by the way on day one. How many of those people are still playing? Like what, what die off rate do you think is going to happen? I think it's so Six hard to in. say. It's so hard to say, right? Because like, I I don't know. I don't know what metric you could look at to even try and predict that number, right? Because you could just so, throw you could throw something yeah. out there, right? It'd be hard. But as yeah. far as making like a truly like calculated like proper estimation, like I I don't know. That that's something that's like really hard to talk about. The closest thing we have, I think, is the Nostalrius post mortem. I think Probably. it was something like eight hundred thousand accounts were created or something like that. And only 150,000 were active by, you know, by the end of the shutdown or something like that. So that's around a 20% yeah. retention rate. Mm -hmm. And let's assume that of those 800,000, let's say 400,000 of those are double accounts. So let's say it's 150,000 out of 400,000 actual people. That's still like a 40% or 38% retention rate or something like that. Yeah. And even so, then, oh, go yeah. ahead. I, I thought you were done. So it's, it's a pretty significant drop off. A lot of people are going to quit. I mean, even, and this is... This is private server people. This is people that play vanilla. A lot of them played it for many years beforehand. So it's a little mm -hmm. bit skewed towards being overrepresentative. So, uh, yeah, you could totally see 30% of people staying, 25% of people staying after the first six months, which is pretty big drop off. Well, but even like, even with that, there's like a lot of different variables that aren't taken into account. So like, yeah. because it's private server, I mean, people talk about this all the time, whenever something easy come, easy go, right? If you can just like make an account, not have to pay for anything, make up some fake email information, boom, you're in. Just as easy as that guy came in, it's just as easy for that guy to quit and stop playing. So it, it, I think it is very yeah. different. Like it's, it's like, yeah, that's probably the closest thing that we have, but. I, I, it, yeah. The, the fact that it's included in the battle in your wow subscription too. Absolutely. A mm -hmm. lot of people are probably going to try it out just because it, it's included. They don't have to pay extra. Mm -hmm. So that's going to skew the numbers too, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tips, I think you're right about that, that being the closest. Uh, but another thing to keep in mind, like you're totally right. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest reasons I hear people say like why they stopped playing private servers or why they got burned out is because they felt like whatever progress they're making, it didn't matter. Like they, they were worried that at any point, you know, their progress could be gone, the server goes down, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think, I think that just 
one one there's a fifteen dollar a month or dollar value attached to you playing on classic wow on top of that you have an assurance that your con uh, that your progress will be saved and it won't just be deleted or the server d goes right. down at some point right mm -hmm. so I, I think i think that like those two factors will lead to a higher retention rate than we see on private servers pro probably i would speculate yeah that's true i think yeah i think i think all that's fair um but yeah, it's it's just it's just very interesting to kind of look at all this stuff, and um, we've talked about this before, right? Like the classic team and and everything that they're doing to to make their decisions. Like it's it's easy for us to like sit here and talk about it, right? But then whenever you actually get down to the nitty gritty and like look at the pros and cons of everything and how if you make this one decision here, how this affects everything else on that end, it's it's really really interesting, and and you can really see how uh, why there probably hasn't been a whole lot of news until recently, you know. Um, Speaking of news that we've gotten recently, we want to kind of highlight some of the stuff that we've been talking about or that we've been hearing about, excuse me. Um, like I said, we wanted to do a classic ass last week, but I was really sick and then Stay Safe was really sick. Uh, one of the first things that I think a lot of people were very excited about was hearing about an answer for loot trading. And uh, it, it was really a compromise, right? Mm. Given how... The, the Blizzard does their customer support, given how Blizzard basically handles all their stuff now with, with WoW. They don't really have a, a big, robust GM team to go handle all the tickets and all the issues. Uh, there's like a lot of stuff that's automated. They thought that if they, you know, just had loot trading in the game and they wouldn't have to worry about like misloading and this and that, then, you know, if, if they didn't have to worry about it on their end, they, the players handle it, then that'd be all good. But the problem is, and we've talked about this extensively. Players are going to take advantage of that. There's going to be some players that are that are going to go in, take advantage of that, and essentially do like a group ninja looting situation. Not to go too far into that, not to go deep, too deep into that. Um, but for example, if you were to go into a group and with a small group of friends, let's say three people, and you're with two other random people, then you could roll need on everything. All of you could roll need on everything for one person and trade to them. And uh, I, I feel like I feel like we've talked about the example so much that I, I really shouldn't go so yeah. much into it. But um, they their answer to that was basically going with the compromise which um very similar to what we had said i, I had said in a master looting situation in a raid environment uh they what they ended up deciding on is that if you are in a raid environment and it's linked to raid lockouts specifically to raid lockouts this was said by kyvax and, and kyvax confirmed it because uh ubrs came into question mm -hmm. if it's linked to a raid lockout meaning Anixia, Molten Core, uh, ZG, BWL, AQ40, AQ20, Nax, then in that instance, you will have loot trading enabled. So whether you're doing group loot or master loot or whatever, it's going to have loot trading enabled. Uh, in my personal opinion, you know what? If they shouldn't have loot trading at all, if you screw up, you screw up, boom, just let it go. Um, but I think this is a very good compromise. And in 99% of the situations, you're going to be master looting in a raid anyway. Uh, the only thing, the only like subset of people that this really uh, affects negatively, I would say, is people who are like pugging raids. Um, maybe there's there's mm -hmm. uh, room for a little bit of like exploitive behavior there. But overall, I, I think it's a really good compromise and much better than what we were getting initially. What do you guys think? No, absolutely. Um, yeah, like you said, I, I think the only negative interaction would be if you are a pug in a guild raid and you're joining another guild for a raid and let's say an item drops um, and they want to roll on it or whatever loot rolls there are for that raid, uh, there's a chance that somebody could roll on it, they could put on a different piece of gear, they could roll on it, and uh, they could take that item, then trade it to their other guild member um, in order to screw over the pug. But that's like, that's yeah. a pretty rare scenario. Like, relatively speaking, that's a pretty rare scenario. And mm -hmm. I'd say about like 95% plus, not, I'd say like 99% plus of the abuse with loot trading has pretty much been neutralized. But I think more than just, just the feature itself, it's just the fact that they listened. The fact that they listened and made this change. Yeah. And this is a change that's this is going to result in money out of their pocket. Like they are going to have to go through more tickets as a result of this most likely. Um, so the fact that they did this, they took the financial hit to doing it. I mean, that was like the big takeaway for me personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah sure. I, I think I think it was a reasonable compromise. You know, I was sort of more like black and white, you know, all or nothing, you know, like I, I, I didn't want it in any regard, but I think having it in raid is pretty reasonable. I think that's probably what's best for like the longevity and general health of classic. Wow. Now, the question is, like, let's say you're in a pug raid and 
take a back going. Let's say you're in a pug raid and, um, you know, there are some people conspiring to steal loot, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the, what is the player response? Like, you, you would, you would, okay, if someone needs something, you ask them to equip it. If they don't equip it, then, mm -hmm. you know, blacklisted, you know, go in trade chat, tell their guild master, yo, this guy did this, mm -hmm. like, spam in trade chat, you know, he's a ninja looter, or these guys are working together. Like, so that's, that's like the player response to that, mm -hmm. which has always been the player response to ninja looters in Classic West. That's what people have to do about that. Mm hmm. And, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I, I was just gonna <laughs> say real quick, like, just to follow up on that, one thing that I would say as as a point of advice and, and stay safe, kind of hit on it, is equipping the piece of gear. Because if you equip gear in whatever loot trading is going on, if you equip gear, then it's bound to you and they can't trade it anymore. So if they get the item, equip the gear, and then it's like, okay, good, it's it's theirs. They can't trade it. Uh, Somebody else, I saw I saw this on the forums, actually, on the Reddit. Uh, somebody brought up the scenario of, okay, let's say, let's say I'm a hunter, and I go in with my other hunter buddy, okay, and I've got full tier one, I've got full tier two, I've got full whatever, and then my hunter buddy doesn't have anything, and we both roll on everything, and then I trade him everything that I get, and then I just equip my own gear whenever mm -hmm. the gear drops. It, it, like, it, it's kind of a crazy scenario, but the one thing that you would have to watch out for in that situation is look at the guy's enchants, right? Because anybody who's in that situation has has good gear like that, you're probably going to have your stuff enchanted. And and that's just something that I would say to watch for. I mean, if, if they put something on and it's enchanted, unless they enchanted it there on the spot, which is probably not likely. I mean, you can, right? I mean, like, if, if you're in a higher end raiding guild you probably show up to raid with enchant consumes and you can or enchant materials and you can enchant your stuff but that's probably not going to happen on a pug raid so if they put on their dragon stalker chess piece and it doesn't have or it has like plus four stats on it right away whenever you told them to uh whenever whenever you told them to equip it then they're probably lying you know as that's just something to watch out for yeah. Well, yeah, and I mean, let's let's say like Quissy's a loot ninja, and she comes to my raid with her hunter friend, and like she she's playing a warrior, and she's gonna like you know a after like after one or two pieces of gear she acquires, like she she wins the role, like I'm gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna look at your gear, <laughs> and I'm gonna like yeah. I wanna I wanna see what you're wearing, and like I'm gonna yeah. like take a little bit more care to see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It I think it definitely contributes to the community aspect of the game as mm -hmm. well. Um, just like leaving the door leaving the window open for the ability for somebody to ninja loot. Am I echoing? No, oh. I think you're good. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, because people kind of create their own destiny that way. Like, if they decide to become a ninja looter, uh, yeah, that like Stay Safe said, they get blacklisted on the server. Um, they kind of pave their own path, make their own destiny, if you mm -hmm. will. Uh, so, yeah, I, th I think it, it has a lot to do with community as well, like the, the ability... Um, to uh, like taking taking loot trading out of five mans and everything. Yeah, yeah, I think I think sense. it's really good. I think no, I think you're right. Uh, I think you're absolutely right. And and people people are gonna be able to police it, so you'll know. I mean, there's people's names who I remember. Right? Like, I'm I'm played like, right, yeah, uh, from like from like two years ago, right? There's people's names I remember. I was like, oh, that guy's a bastard. I hate that guy. <laughs> it's just like you know, you don't you don't forget, right? There's people from back in vanilla that you remember. I mean, and people talk about like the whole. AQ40, the the ringing of the gong on Illidan, right? With with Z Extreme and all, all that stuff. So, um, I mean, these things these are things that people remember, right? I mean, the game the game is a game where you're so heavily invested into it that you end up making these relationships and you end up making these memories that are just like embedded in you forever, right? Um, yeah. Well, yeah, like some some people, you know, we've talked about this. I think that loot mm -hmm. trading is bad or sorry, I think that ninja looting is bad, but I think the capacity for players to ninja loot is good. And this is exactly what Quizzy said. Like some people just want to be the bad guy. Like they want it. Some people, it's fun for them to have everyone hate them. And anytime they talk in trade chat, everyone calls them out and they can't get an invite to a guild and they make their own little troll guild mm. full of three other like ninja looters. Like <laughs> they just want to be the bad boy. Yeah. And you need to, you need to give people the capacity to be the bad guy. I think that's very important. Yeah, I think so. I Absolutely. Think... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think yeah. So. Like there, there's no room for that in uh, retail. Wow. And uh, it, it's kind of like that that mentality. Like everybody gets a trophy. You know, like mm -hmm. in in retail, like. Oh yeah, if you, oh, your your item dropped. Okay, let me trade it to you. But like in in vanilla, it's kind of like tough shit. Like if if it drop if it didn't drop for you, just run it again. Or if somebody took it from you, like too bad. Yeah. You, you gotta run it again. They just go again and, that, and again and again and again, over and over game. and over again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember 
just like how many times I ran Strath Undead with uh actually it was Snide. Stay safe. Like Snide, like that, that was one of the first yep. times like I, I just gotten to know Snide and make friends with Snide and he was just like, Okay, whatever and we just like I don't know, just sped run Strath Undead, just like boom, just yep. popping him off and he's like, No, like I'll I'll run it until you need it and I, I don't know how many times we ran it. But that's just yep. how it goes, right? <laughs> And it's like yeah. it can be a grind, sure, but it ends up being fun, and, and you end up making friends through that. It's really cool. Yeah, and mm -hmm. enemies. And enemies. <laughs> so, and enemies. exactly. Um, the next piece, the the next piece of news that we got. Uh, well, this isn't in order necessarily, but uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about, as far as news goes, and this is something that's a little bit more controversial, is uh, the Alterac Valley news. Um, Alterac Valley wasn't something like I was expecting them to talk about specifically without talking about like the rest of PvP or, um, you know, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit, I guess. But they basically came out and said they wanted to come out with the later version of Vanilla WoW. It's not retail AV. It's still Vanilla WoW's Alterac Valley. Uh, they just don't want to have the initial launch version. And uh, in my opinion... I'm going to be completely honest, and I know a lot of other like PvPers and stuff who feel this way. AV, especially early AV, was very much like a PvE battleground. And you you can talk about how, oh, like, you know, it's way faster. It doesn't last for days. Like, no, it's not that much faster. Like, I've, I've done it on private server, too. And private server has at least tried to emulate the original version with the mines and with everything else. They don't know the exact location of the mines. They're, they're guessing where the mines were. But even then, like, people are doing, like, good AV pre-mades with, like, 10 minutes. You know, it, it, they're just popping them off all the time. So it's not every AV doesn't last days or hours or weeks or whatever, right? Um, it happens sometimes. People can turtle. And if you try and turtle, you end up getting flamed for it usually because people, a lot of times people do it when they want to grind on her. And, like, I think the long AVs are a lot of fun. Like, I remember it's still on my channel. Like, AV had just launched, and it's my my – red white and blue stream i think we did av we did like a four or five hour av or whatever like that stuff is fun um but it just because they like don't have the mines and uh they don't have the exact like original av as opposed to like the the later vanilla av doesn't mean that it's not going to be able to last forever or that it's yeah. going to be really fast and yeah. just just to clarify when when people are talking about the mines and av they're not talking about the mines that you go into like the, like the tunnels or the caves they're talking about in early all track valley right. there were mines that were off the path that prevented you from going off the path and if you ran over them they would blow you up and you would die like they did a ton of damage so it sort of bottlenecked you into certain uh paths that you had to yeah. take anyway absolutely and beyond the actual gameplay i think the biggest the biggest thing about it is the the honor gains and like the way it's set up uh, basically, the early versions of AV were so lucrative honor-wise that you basically have to spam them over and over again, regardless of what other BG weekend you're on, because that's the most efficient honor. And so you take away player choice, you take away player agency, and being able to pick whatever BG they want to rank with, and instead you, you funnel everyone into AV over and over again, time after time. And as we know, you know, forcing someone to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, especially with something as grindy as the rank grind itself, it's just it's just not good for the game. So the 112 AV, it allows players to play whatever BG they want for the most part. And, you know, if it's AV weekend, play AV. If it's, you know, worse, if it's worse on Gulch, if it's AB, play the other BGs. But it gives you choice and allows you to play the game how you want to play it instead of feeling forced to play one version of one of the BGs. Yeah, I, I sure? definitely agree. I agree with what S1 said earlier. I think that 112 AB is probably the best and most reasonable option that they had as far as like all track valley goes. What you said about early all track valley being like much more so of a PVE uh, mm -hmm. battleground was very, very true. Like, like they said in the blue post, there are a lot of high health NPCs that like. Uh, especially the Korak, the Blood Rager guy that they actually yeah. mentioned by name in the blue post. Like, if you're running through the field of strife in the middle and you aggro that guy, you're just gonna die. Like. It, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it it takes like your entire raid to stop and kill him actually before you can progress through safely. So it, mm. there, and there were other NPCs as well that sort of served the same purpose. Um, I definitely think that one twelve AV is the best option for classic. Wow, right. the Korak guy in particular sure. though, that was like that was one of the things that I was kind of sad to see go because it's always fun. fun. Yeah, it's always <laughs> fun to find, especially when like he's the original quest objective for like the blues, the, the AV mm. blue quest. 
Like, <laughs> it's fun to fight over him. But then it also means longer games because he only spawned at the two-hour mark in AV. And he only spawned once. So if you, you know, queue up into an AV and it's a fresh AV, usually people intentionally turtle till he spawns. So you have a bare minimum two-hour AV games where nobody's doing anything just so they can try to kill him, do the quest. And then he comes up. Both the Horde and the Alliance can tag him. Whichever faction gets him, gets him. And then a lot of people end up leaving the game and requeuing. So it's like, it, it definitely has negative gameplay effects too, for sure. Mm -hmm. And and just to mention real quick, those of you guys who don't know like the, the significance of Korak, there's a quest, right? There's a quest to, to kill him and you can get good item like ice barb spear for example which is a really good two-handed pull arm and you also get the the i think it's just called like rune of recall i don't know the exact name of it i can't remember but you get a uh a recall rune to go to the uh to basically it's like a it's like a hearthstone to go back to the to, the, to your base area if you want to go back and defend oh, yeah. um i believe i believe i, I could be wrong on this but i i believe that uh whenever they got rid of that you could do the quest to just win an AV and you can get an IBS. So, or you get an Ice Barb Spear and you don't get IBS. <laughs> that's that's something else. <laughs> yeah, you, you get an Ice Barb Spear or, or whatever else, what other, whatever other quest reward that you want. Um, but I don't remember you having the rune. Uh, I don't remember you having the rune uh, or the, the, the little AV Hearthstone on, from the, the new trinket? quest. Uh, I, I think it was just like a use thing with charges. So mm. I can't remember, but... Yeah. Yeah, 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 but I just think it's I just think it's interesting how they want to do that. Um, yeah, not irritable, not irritable bowel syndrome. Ice barb spear, uh, just to, just to clarify. So, Quizzy, speaking of PVE battlegrounds and stuff, you you got your prop pal on level sixty. Um, yeah. Did you play like at all to to the point whenever like battlegrounds and stuff were coming out before you switched to your priest? Did you even try, or did you just like go priest main the whole time? A little bit, because it was really hard for me to give up on that character, especially because I spent so much time on it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I did. I tried some battlegrounds. Um, I, I there was a lot of world PvP too, because I was on a PvP right. server, and I did level solo for most of it, which is also why it took a while. Um, but I remember, uh, I remember like this one instance in particular. I think I was in Feralis in in a cave, and these two rogues come up to me and they try to gank me. And they ended up just like killing themselves, basically. Like I, I barely need to do anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, holy shield, red aura, consecration. Um, I, yeah, it, it was. I think I had reckoning. So right. Yeah, it was insane. Yeah. But, uh, Especially with like the early talents too. Like paladins were insane. Just uh, like sword and shield, everything. Like paladins were really good in PvP early talents. With, like yeah, against the, against melee, it was it was pretty hard to kill me. Mm-hmm. So what are you going to be playing in Classic WoW then? Hopefully not a prop pally. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, well, yeah, it's funny because I mained a priest in vanilla. Um, but then as the years went on, I, I kind of went back to playing a paladin. And mm -hmm. um, through, through all the expansions up until Legion, I kind of switched between prot and ret. Um, especially like in BC, prot was amazing. So that was so much fun. Um, and then in Legion, I switched to holy for the first time. Um, and I had so much fun with it that I just kind of kept with it. Like, uh, Holy was pretty OP in Legion and even in BFA, like it, it's not bad. Um, so I'm going to try Holy Pally in vanilla. There you go. There you uh, go. which is funny cause I never played a Holy Pally, uh, end game <laughs> in vanilla. Yeah, so <laughs> it's going to be fun, but, uh, you know, they we're pretty damn good healers, you know, endless mana, mm -hmm. not a crazy rotation. So I, th I think I'll be all right. Yeah, no, holy paladins are, are awesome. Like you, you shouldn't play anything other than holy if you're gonna play a paladin. Uh, <laughs> right. I, I actually one hundred percent agree, dude. That's you mentioned that. <laughs> no, holy but, uh, paladins I are mean, they're yeah. awesome. Good choice, yeah. Very good choice. Raiding as a priest was so much fun too, so that'll probably be my alt whenever mm -hmm. I get around to it. That's good. That's awesome. I don't know about a dwarf though. We'll see. Yeah. So yeah, I think um dwarf dwarfs are actually like Whenever it comes to paladins, though, it's funny because I, I play a human, but I think if you're not doing ret in PVE, then you should probably go dwarf, just in my opinion. 
but I mean, people can just do whatever. Like as far as like, oh yeah, you know, if you're trying to go for min max and PvP, and you you want to have stone form to get rid of a blind or whatever, or even an AQ40, right? You could soak for a little bit with it. But uh, anyway, just just moving on from that, uh, the last piece of news, uh, and and this is something that a lot of people were really excited about, especially duelists, right? Not not just PvPers, but duelists. And I think these are two different types of people: the the duelists and the PvPers. Like like, so you have okay, you have PvPers, right? These are PvPers. And then subcategories of PvPers, you got rankers and then you have duelists. And they're two different types of people um, who just like want to play the game a different way. So I, I would say more than anything, like the duelists, uh, this is something that, that they were probably really excited about with spell batching, all PvPers, but, but particularly the duelists. Uh, what spell batching is, is it's essentially a latency buffer. Okay, it's a it's a latency buffer for whenever you cast your spells, and uh, how the server reads them as far as tick rates goes. So, essentially, if two people would hit the same button at the same time or about the same time, their spells would go off at the same time. So, the most common occurrence of this would be if you had two people casting instant cast spells running into each other, and as soon as they get into range, there let's say let's say it's two. Uh, paladins, right? Spamming Hammer of Justice in a duel, they stun each other at the same time. Let's say it's two warriors and they're running into range and they're in charge range, boom, they both charge each other at the same time. Uh, that's probably the most common case of seeing spell bashing come into play. But another time when you can see spell bashing come into play is uh, if you're getting CC'd or something and then you CC another guy while you're getting CC'd so then you can basically burn off some of the CC and the longer CC prevails and uh, if they have like a long cooldown or whatever it ends up being really good. An example of this would be uh, as a paladin, let's say if you're fighting a rogue, he cheap shots you and he's loading up his combo points on you and if he lets cheap shot drop for a second and he kidney shots you right after that and you're spamming your hammer of justice out of a cheap out of a cheap shot you hammer at the same time he kidneys so mm -hmm. in that scenario even though your stuns are about the same your stun lasts a minute baseline and his stun lasts 20 seconds baseline so this ends up being really really good for the rogue because he has a chance to basically go out and reset without you having a stun or anything like that um Spell bashing is something that a lot of times, whenever it comes into play, a lot of people feel like it's kind of buggy, but it is how the game feels and it is how the game plays. Um, it's it's important to getting like that sort of vanilla feel to the game, and it does have gameplay implications, right? I know a lot of times if I'm fighting a rogue, I won't spam Hammer of Justice out of a cheap shot because I don't want that to happen. So I'll wait for him to kidney me and I'll trinket and then hammer, or I'll trinket the cheap shot and then I'll hammer him right away. For example. Um, I think this is something that a lot of people are, I think a lot of people thought that it wasn't going to happen. Uh, like I totally thought it was not going to happen. I mean, but dude, just, just the fact that they, like, they really, this is a, this is a thing. Uh, the spell bashing issue is an issue that so few people were even aware of or could even articulate very well. Mm -hmm. Um, if they, if they didn't include it in classic, wow, very few people would have actually noticed. So the fact that they went, like, I really think with this issue, they went above and beyond I think so to, really, to really keep the game as authentic as they possibly could. It's a very, very good sign that they did this, like, for real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I agree. Agreeing, <laughs> yeah. Andy. Yeah, just just shows that they're listening. Yeah. yeah, they're I, listening yeah to us. Sure. I think that it's good. I think that's really good. I, I know, like, you know, we, we had heard from uh a while back, like, I know, just like getting the chance to like talk to you, and, and we've had you on Classic As or Sakar now. If you guys uh, have been following along with Sakar uh, since he left Blizzard, <clears throat> um, and, and just having talked to him about a lot of this stuff, he mentioned that you know it was something that was potentially on the table. Like you know, the, you know, even though like he couldn't say anything specific, it was like okay, like I, you know, you, you got, you know, like, okay, I, I, I get what you're saying. Like it's like okay, this is something that at least had been brought up or at least they were aware of, of the situation. But to uh, to actually see it happen was like pretty cool. Uh, it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't completely out of left field, but it just like, it had been kind of such like a quiet issue for so long. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, hey, by the way, we're going to do this. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. That's pretty one, cool. One thing with the spell batching post that was so interesting to me was that, or surprised to me was that spell batching is actually still in the game, but that latency window is 10 times smaller than it was approximately uh, in, in vanilla WoW. So yeah. stuff like that, that, you know, uh, like same time CC, stuff like that, that can still happen in retail WoW, but the chance of it happening is is so much uh, smaller than it is in vanilla WoW. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, I, I didn't know that either. I was really surprised to hear that. 
Yeah, that's what I heard. It was actually pretty easy to reimplement the spell batching, and I heard it was just it was a matter of like changing just like one very small thing in the code to like it loops around like a few times. Somebody explained it to me the other day, but uh, I think this is a great example. Like I also was one of the people that thought they probably wouldn't do this because mm -hmm. you know intuitively you think about it, you're like that sounds like a very technical issue. That's probably a really complicated thing to do, and like our ignorance and the technical side of things like led us to, like a faulty conclusion, but. Um, but no, it's it's good that they did it, and uh, you know, again, like, it's it's an extra step. Nobody really expected it of them, and hopefully that you know that that can only mean good things moving forward. That can only mm -hmm. mean that they're working on a lot of other things as well. That hopefully we didn't expect them to uh, to keep yeah, authentic. We, we can hope, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, let's hope. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I think uh, I, I think something else. Um, something else with spell batching that. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about, right? I, not, not. Uh, it's not a huge concern, but I'll go ahead and mention it. Um, because of the feeling that spell bashing, whenever it comes into play, kind of feels buggy at times. Uh, I'm worried about them implementing it and almost going a little bit overboard with it, and then it's just like, okay, this is happening all the time, and it's not supposed to. Um, like, sure, it like happens every now and then, or like you can kind of predict it, right? Like it. it what how, what it ends up doing whenever it's in the game and whenever you as a player are trying to like take advantage of it it makes you it changes your gameplay uh to be a little bit more proactive right because you think like okay for example i'm running at stay safe stay safe and i are dueling right and he's, he's no more lock i'm a human rep paladin and if i'm in range of him for a hammer of justice and i'm like i have it up and i just guess like okay i think he's gonna death coil now right and then i hit it and I stun him right as soon as he death coils, I might be able to stun his death coil. And I like waste his longer cooldown on a, on a, on a death coil with my hammer. That's just, that's just like an example of like when it comes into play and... Um, well, you know, that's probably going to happen very often because everyone knows that red paladins are actually a hard counter for warlocks. So yeah, know, that's, that sort of stuff happens all I, the time. I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> but <laughs> No, yeah, I think, I think that's something that... Um, my, my, my point with that is that uh, if they if they make the window too big, right, but surely they're going to be able to go and they're going to tweak it maybe in like, you know, a beta or something, maybe in some sort of a testing period, uh, they can go through and they can make sure that kind of stuff feels right. And uh, that's one of the big things that we're really hoping to see going forward. <clears throat> Speaking of which, there's actually a number of things that, uh, you know, there's still, still things left on the table that we want to see going forward. And with as big of a month as March was, I think that there's a pretty good chance that April and, uh, April and May end up being pretty big as well. Um, oh, yeah. especially I mean, with Mr. I, Summer I, release I, coming around the corner. Tips. I know you have a lot of info on this or, you know, exactly how many, I think it's like four or five or whatever, but how, how many blue posts were there in March? Like it was a lot. They really picked up the pace, dude. In total, uh, if you don't, if you count like, if you don't count the inconsequential ones, it's six major blue posts in March, which is pretty big. Like that's that's, that's triple, that's mm -hmm. triple the amount we got prior to BlizzCon. So <laughs> it's yeah. like, uh, it's great. And I know some people were saying that uh, we didn't get one today or, or yesterday or something like that. No, that's because Blizzard doesn't care anymore. They gave up. The quit. Yeah, it's over. It's over. <laughs> Classic is doomed. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, the last one I think was on Thursday, so we, we still have some time. I mean, I wouldn't expect one till the end of this week, personally. And to be honest, I'm quite happy there wasn't one yesterday, for sure. I think a lot of us were spared some some agonizing and crippling anxiety. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's good. Uh, you know, I think we'll get one by the end of this week, for sure. Well, one one thing, it's really interesting about these blue posts in, in March. Like, they sort of changed their format of blue posts, where prior they, they had these very in-depth, very, like, analytical, very detailed, like, water cooler uh, talks um, that were, like, very, very detailed. Now, th these are more, like, brief, like, philosophical design ideas, right? And whereas before the dev water cooler talks probably took a ton of time um, to get on paper, these, like, maybe you can have, like, a CM stand behind the classic dev as he's working on classic, and he can sort of just, like, verbally dictate this stuff. You know, it's probably much easier for them to put this out than it was for the water cooler talks, which is probably why, like, maybe they made that realization that this is an approach they want to take, and that's probably resulted in why we see these so much more often now with with higher frequency. Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I, I think one of the big things is, at least from, like, a community perspective, right? I think that BFA has hit a point where people are, you know, kind of bored with it. Uh, I would just say as a whole, people gave it a try, and and I know I, I had my fun with it. 
with like you know the launch. I thought I I I'll say like I thought launch was fun. I, I was surprised actually. I thought pre patch was especially fun. Pre patch was really fun, but then like after around BlizzCon time, it was just kind of like <laughs> died. Like I just I, I didn't have it in me anymore. Like I just I was like this isn't really fun for me and. um that's why I've been doing like, you know, and we all have, we've all been doing like all kinds of different stuff since then. So <clears throat> I think, uh, I think that people are getting a little bit antsy. People are getting excited. People, people are getting anxious for classic and especially knowing that it's going to come out this summer and not knowing when this summer, I think, uh, I think them coming out with more classic news is just good. Like it's, it's good for us cause that's what we want. Uh, but it's also good for blizzard and it's good for wow as a whole. So, uh, I think they're going to keep doing it and I think, uh, I think it's going to be really good. Um, of the things that are left, of the things that are remaining to, to hear, there's a number of things left. Uh, I think one of the big things is there's still not really an answer for sharding. And sharding is something that I, I think it's still like a really hot button topic. Um, cause you know, the, the big thing was whenever we went into the classic demo and I personally didn't experience, experience it at BlizzCon. I didn't experience it until I got home because it was different on the BlizzCon floor than it was on the live servers, but, uh, or on the, on the demo servers. But, uh, every, there's something that consensus, everybody was pretty like, what the hell, like what, what's going on. Right. And they said, like, I literally, I, I got off my streaming spot at BlizzCon and I saw Quizzy. I think Quizzy came on right after that. So I was like, hey, Quizzy. And then I, and I walked over to, uh, I walked over to Yithusins and I was like, what's going on? Like, like what's spell batching? Or not spell batching. What's, uh, what's going on with sharding? And it was basically that sharding was like a temporary solution for the sake of the demo. Like it's something that was already in the game. They were like, okay, well, let's just leave it like this, at least for the demo. Because if you're going to have a server's worth of people in the Barrens and Westfall, then we probably need to have it just so that people can play the demo and, and get to get to mess yeah. around in it. So that's what that's what that was at the time. Now with that being said, that's also something they've talked about and they said like this could be something that ends up legitimately being what they feel like is the best solution. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't like sharding just inherently. I know I don't like it. I think most people don't like it inherently. But uh, I've said it before. I think that I, I I wouldn't be surprised if they went with sharding at least for launch. I don't think they should do it overall because there's there's all kinds of other implications, all kinds of other issues with it. But if they went for launch, like in the starting zones, they had sharding and, uh, you know, just in like Elwyn, Dunmoreau, uh, Duratar, whatever, right? And uh, they, they they just kept it to that. Not, don't put it anywhere else. Don't put it at the AQ40 event. That's, that's one example that always comes up. And the problem specifically with the AQ40 event, the reason why that example comes up is one, it's, that's notoriously a big, large-scale event where a lot of people on the server are probably going to be there. Um, and two, if it's if they're sharding, then that's going to make more instances of the gong. So there's more gongs to ring. So how are they going to approach that? Mm -hmm. So it's it's got gameplay implications and just community aspect, all that stuff. So I don't know. That's that's how I feel. If it's in there at the very beginning, just for the yeah. sake of like being able to play the game for the first ten levels. And then after that, like you, you basically extend the bottleneck, you move the bottleneck back and then you have like player speed kind of come into factor there. And then now the bottleneck is still going to be there. There's always going to be a bottleneck whenever you end the sharding, but it's going to be a lot less. Um, like, yeah, cause, so like, cause what's the other solution, right? Dynamic respawns. And, and that's got all oh yeah, its own problems here, as well. Here, here's, here's like the deal with dynamic respawns versus sharding. When the player, when, when, when the classical community has dynamic respawns in their brain, they're thinking of private server dynamic respawns. And what we've seen on private servers with dynamic respawns is terrible. Like, I'm going to be honest, it's atrocious. Like, you can't go in caves, you can't go in wrecked ships off the coast. Mm -hmm. You're killing things in the open world just randomly in, in the in the freaking forest mm -hmm. like a wolf. And by the time you kill it, loot it, drink up, like, you're still trying to recover, and then it respawns back on top of you. Mm -hmm. And it's very, like, it, it makes it very easy to die. Like, things can respawn so fast that you just cannot survive against them <laughs> in certain scenarios. Caves are just, like like I said, you just can't go inside of them. It's it's I think I think if they have private server style dynamic respawns in class well, that will turn a lot of people off. So if it's if it's if it's a debate between dynamic respawns in the in the vein of what we seen on private servers versus sharding in the one to ten or one to fifteen level range, I'm gonna I'm honestly going to say that I would prefer sharding in that level range com as as opposed to what we seen on private servers with dynamic respawns. That dynamic respawn system on private servers is is terrible. Now I'll say this. Um, I fully believe, I fully believe that Blizzard is probably able to implement dynamic respawns in a better way than private servers. 
Like I, I have full faith in Blizzard to to have bet a better dynamic response system than scuffed private servers that we've seen. Like that's how I feel. So mm -hmm. um, may, maybe maybe Blizzard has has a solution that isn't sharding that is dynamic response that would be better than private servers. Yeah, <laughs> I'm curious what Quissy thinks about this. This is a topic we talked about a lot. What do you think, Quissy? Like from a launch perspective, like. Uh, what do you think is the best solution? I mean, I, it just made me think back to earlier on in our conversation where we were kind of debating how many servers we think they're going to have at launch. Um, I remember vanilla launch, uh, the, the queues were super long. Um, servers went down for like day here and there. Uh, I remember being rewarded game time just because of all the server issues that they, they had in the beginning. Um, as for as for like leveling, I I mean God, I can't even remember like how crowded the server was in the beginning. Um, but honestly, like uh, sharding, um, I'd I'd hate to see it just because again, like my main thing is going back to the community aspect, and um, you just want to like be able to see everybody, I guess. Like in the demo, you know, when people were phasing in and out, it was kind of weird. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know. I'm kind of torn because I, yeah, we, we want those servers to run smoothly on the other hand. Yeah. I um, think that, uh, I, I mean, back in the day there was no sharding, there was no dynamic response. There's no nothing. There was long queues. And I think that's a big concern is, is nowadays people just, they want to log in instantly and they want to not have to wait on a queue. And I think that's mm -hmm. something that blizzard is, is looking at and saying like, is this something we want to deal with? Um, looking at that and kind of leveraging that versus like, what should the population cap be? Uh, this is a big concern for streamers. Uh, so, not, not, not. I mean, even us, but not to the extent of like somebody who's really big, like uh, you know, Asmin or Soda Poppin or one of those guys, right? Because if they have like twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand people watching them, maybe even more, and they want to play on whatever server, and then they have a bunch of people watching them who also want to play on their server, it's like, how are all those people going to get in? Um, mm. They're not. That's the short answer. But the the method of how many of those people are going to get in, uh, that's that's what really comes into question. And if they want to just put like a big fat queue on it, whether they want to increase the population cap and uh, use sharding to artificially like increase the the front end of it, um, I don't know. Like I said, like it, it's something that's it, it's such a big deal. And I think that the best way that they can really do like legitimate research and find out a good solution is to have a stress testing period or a beta testing period where they come out and they say, okay, guys. We're doing a launch test and what we're going to do with the launch test today is we're going to have one server there's going to be let's i'm throwing a number out there totally random five thousand people right you have five thousand people and we are going to log in no dynamic response no sharding no nothing we're going to try and log in and we're going to see what happens right what's going to happen with five thousand people coming in and basically going into uh what is it three different starting zones or sorry six different starting zones so what's going to happen if we take if we take all these people, split them between six different starting zones and just let them roam free, no sharding, no nothing. I think they need to do that. I think they need to do that. And then I think they also, they need to do their due diligence and they need to test it with sharding as well. And they really need to go and they need to get legitimate testing, legitimate evidence of, of their findings. Like, okay, this is, this is what's going on. But not only that, and this is one of the most important things with it, is if you're part of the community and if you're in that test, then you can see it with your own eyes. Oh, this is what's going on, right? You can see if it's good. You can see if it's bad. Get the community involved with the testing. I think, I think that's great. I think that's really good. Yeah, like I, in my opinion, I think having, let's say, let's say they decide on a 4,000 population cap server, server cap, and there's login queues on top of that if people want to play on those more desirable servers. No sharding, no dynamic response. You just have to fight for what you have. Like, yeah. in my opinion, that's that's the that's that's my desired solution to the problem. Yeah. Just nothing. Just no no. Uh, I mean, in, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, that would work. Just yeah, just let it run. Like, I mean, that'd be it. ideal, right? Well, yeah, I don't know if they that, can do that. That, that paves the way for alternative gameplay. So maybe you're skipping the first couple of quests where you have to loot wolf meat. Like maybe you're going to random mobs off in, off in the middle of nowhere and you're grinding those for a couple of levels or like an hour or so. Maybe you're trying exploration XP routes. Maybe you just have to wait and struggle for tags. Like yeah. there's there's no, here, here's, here's the reality of the launch situation. Like the launch situation, the first 24, 48 hours, level one to 15 or whatever it's going to be, there is no solution they can come up with that will make everyone happy. 
Like there will be people that are angry about about whatever they come up with. So they, mm-hmm. they have to they have to do the thing that just like makes the makes the game the most playable. Mm-hmm. Well, that yeah. has to be their concern. You you touched on it, right? You're talking about alternative gameplay. Um, sometimes you just have to be creative. I mean, like there's people who yeah. they go and they get their first few, few levels exploring. Actually, didn't you do a video on that? Stay safe. You, a long time ago. Like like long, like, time, ago. long yeah. time ago. You did a video on this. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I remember. And and here's the thing with yeah. Vanilla WoW. Like it's all about being creative. Like like Vanilla WoW is not about hand holding. So if, if you have to think outside the box, but okay, I've been trying to kill this wolf for 10 minutes. This quest is not going to happen. I'm going to go do something else now. Like that's, that's not unreasonable to expect of players. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it'd be great if they, if they just did nothing for the launch, just cause I think that would help reduce the, the population very quickly, which should be <laughs> all nice. Um, but, uh, <coughs> Like you said, they're gonna they're gonna do whatever they feel is best, and I think from their perspective right now, it is sharding. Um, who knows? I mean, I, I I still would prefer maybe slightly larger caps with some dynamic spawns. And again, like Stay Safe said, like instant spawning mobs, like you saw on Saturday, is is not like that's not dyna- That's just one version of dynamic spawns. There's a broad spectrum. Whether yeah. whether a mob spawns after one second or ten seconds or thirty seconds has very different implications depending on which of those scenarios it is. So, so, yeah. I, I just want to add something. Sorry. Like th- this is this is the thought I ha- the thought process I had after Saturday. What would turn more people away from Classic WoW? Dynamic respawns exactly like we saw on Saturday, or sharding one to ten? And I I I actually genuinely think that what we saw on Saturday. That that sort of dynamic response system would turn more people away from classic WoW than sharding one to ten. I genuinely think that. Dude, I mean, yeah, just, I agree. I, you and you tweeted about this. Stay safe. It, I I remember it. I read your tweet and I just like, oh, dude. I remember whenever I first started playing on, uh, and this is I hadn't been part of the private server scene really at the time, but I remember whenever I first started playing and I couldn't kill anything in Elwyn, so I left. Uh, I, I left and I went to Dun Moreau on my paladin and I started doing the quest in Dunmore to level up and get exploration XP on the way. I was like, I can't kill anything. This is dumb. I'm just going to go. Mm-hmm. So I, I go and I, you know, explore to go, uh, get to Dunmore and I go to the, uh, the Yeti caves and I kill like two Yetis in and I'm like, just kind of working my way in. And it's like, by the time that I pull the third Yeti, the Yeti that I had just killed respawned behind me. And I just died, and I spent like thirty minutes trying to get out of this cave, like, because I was I was stupid, and I was like trying to do the quest, and I was like trying to get in, I like couldn't leave. It was this whole thing, right? And and I think somebody who is, uh, I think somebody who's new to the game is definitely going to see that, and like, sure, like that's what experience is, and that's what happens. Like, people who play the game longer are going to be better at the game because they're going to have those experiences to call and be like, you know what, I probably shouldn't do this. Um, now yeah. the the real question comes in is like was that part of the intended gameplay and the intended experience of Vanilla WoW? Like, probably not. Right? Actually, definitely not. Um, and I I just want to add one more thing real quick. I'm going to mm-hmm. say this again. I think as far as dynamic respawns go, I think that Blizzard like I, I have to believe that Blizzard could implement dynamic respawns better than anything we've seen on a private server. So if if they chose to go the dynamic respawn route, I think it would be better than what we've seen on private servers. Like maybe if it was like adaptive or more. Um... Like more, it, it more wasn't fine to, to very specific zones or areas or you know what I mean? It wouldn't I mean it wouldn't be impossible, yeah. right? It, it wouldn't be impossible to think that. Uh I mean I, I think that I mean that, that this is a whole separate discussion, right? How much better could dynamic could Blizzard's dynamic response be than uh something that a volunteer private server team made? Like sure, like they you know, they yeah. put a lot of effort into it and all that. But whenever you have like a you know full blown team and like, okay, like let's look at this. Maybe maybe mobs respawn at this rate, you have uh, you know the different nodes and stuff respawn at this rate. Maybe you have this quest. Like, what's what's the quest in? Um, so there's a quest outside of Red Ridge uh, where you have to go into the hold into the into the keep with the orcs. And there's a quest at the top with like a five minute oh. respawn. And there's just always a massive line. Uh, Tharl Zoom or whatever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, <laughs> okay, like don't do this quest. Why are you guys doing this quest? Like, just go yep. do something else. It's a huge waste yep. of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. But it's a big, it's a big bottleneck because people go in and they're just like, okay, like let's go do this quest, and just because they see it on their list and they want to go do everything, completionist mentality, and that's fine. Like anybody should be able to play WoW the way that they want in, in that regard. Like if you want to go through and do all the quests, like the last time I leveled a sixty, it took me five weeks and I twinked, <laughs> I twinked for a week at level fifty nine, like because I, I didn't think that I was gonna keep playing. <laughs>
playing. Like I was just like, whatever. Um, and, and yeah, like some people just take forever cause they want to take forever and they want to PVP and they want to do all the dungeons and this and that other people want to just boom, they want to hit it as fast as possible. Um, yeah. and yeah, so it's, I, it's I don't know. I just think it's funny. Earlier, earlier today, uh, we watched the video of, it was actually Asmongold's mom from vanilla. Wow. She hit level 16 and it took her 50 days slash. Play. Yeah. Okay. That was, was on my recommended too. I don't know why that was on my recommended. Yeah. I always see yeah. that one too. And yeah, yeah, like, you know, it was a, it was a good comfy video like that. It's there's so no wholesome way like that. It's just wholesome video. Yeah. How come YouTube never recommends my videos? What the hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing about vanilla. Like uh, back in original vanilla, I never felt compelled to to get to the max level. Like it was never it was never a thing. It was like yeah, there's rating. There there's something out there, but like like. You could just battleground. You could do anything. You quest, level, world PvP, Guru Bashi Arena. I mean, all of this stuff was just there. And whether you experienced it at level fifty or at sixty or at forty or at thirty, it didn't really make a difference. And and you never really felt compelled. You know, it was, it was about the journey, literally. But I'm sorry, Quissy. I think I cut you off. Oh no, no, I was preparing my next thought. No, I was thinking about a uh, uh, going back to Ragnarok online. And I'm sure many old school uh, MMOs are like this, but there's no quests in the game. So you basically just choose an area to grind in for a certain number of levels. And uh, and that's it. When you're done, you find a group and uh, you just go there, kill mobs for hours and then move on to a different zone. So, yeah, going back to WoW, like some people prefer to just grind off mobs level that way. Um, a lot of people who uh, moved over from my guild in RO uh, preferred that method. Like wasn't kind of it, and grinding. Wasn't it John Stats during our class cast a while ago that said that they originally they they were thinking of not even having quests in in WoW, and it was like an afterthought. <laughs> yeah, it was new to me well, doing quests. Yeah, I, I can't I can't remember. I I remember in Dark Age of Camelot it was the same thing. There was no quests. Like like the whole entire questing system and all this stuff. Like PVE was in general yeah. just a thousand times better than anything I'd ever experienced. Yeah, I, I came from RuneScape, you know, like there were there were a couple like a handful of quests in like two thousand four, two thousand five, but you it was it was a grinding game. That's what games were. You just grinded. And you in RuneScape you chopped trees for eighteen hours a day and that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, you, you didn't like yeah, it wasn't it wasn't like a super quest progression system. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> kind of moving on from the sharding talk, I mean I I think like I said, that's something everybody's kind of confused about and everybody just kind of hopes they make the best decision. I mean, in a perfect world, like they're going to find a solution without any sharding whatsoever. But uh, are they going to be able to do that? We'll see. Uh, to move on from that, <clears throat> we uh, we talked a little bit about uh, beta stress test, all this stuff. Uh, a lot of a lot of people thought there might be an announcement soon. We might be, you know, I, I think we're due for an announcement of a release date. But before you get an announcement of a release date, hearing about a beta or a stress testing period or something, uh, I, I think is probably a lot more important, right? I mean, at least a lot more reasonable um, to to hear about that first before you hear about the release date. So I, I don't know. I think this is something that we could realistically be getting here in the next couple of weeks. I, I, I just so, we're due. That's how I feel. Let me ask you guys this. Do you think we're going to have an alpha or a beta? Or do you think we're just going to have maybe one or two stress tests? Or just nothing at all, just a release? At I, this point, like just, just looking at the time frame now, I, I don't know anymore. I mean, uh, the terminology, I don't know like the technical side of the terminology, but it certainly won't be a Blizzard style beta. Not the World of Warcraft betas, not the six month long betas or alpha beta combination that we've been seeing recently. It's not going to be that. That's for sure. Um, I I think that yeah. I I think that there's there's got to be something. They're like they're making a huge, just massive mistake if there's not something, right? Because there, there's two ways to look at this, right? And and this is something that's really important. And I think that Blizzard should should definitely take into account is if you can get people who care so much about this game to go in and play the game and this is something they definitely did after the demo we we know for a fact we know firsthand that they did this after the demo um if you have people playing the game and they notice oh hey you didn't fix this yet hey you didn't fix this yet hey you didn't fix this yet and you're able to give feedback right whether it's on the forums whether it's on reddit whether it's people making videos you know direct feedback whatever then it kind of allows them to go through and double check everything because yeah. it's not so much that they don't know it's that there's a lot of stuff to fix and they might have missed something right so, so like, if you throw everybody to, to, in there 
go ahead. I was going to say to go with that, like, here's my thought. And I'm, I don't know the technical terms, so I'm going to sound like an idiot trying to articulate this, but I don't know how easy it is for like, they've said they have the 112 client internally that they're, that they can ref the reference client, right? Um, I don't know how seamlessly they can just copy everything, like all the quest information and, and values. I don't know if they can just very easily copy that over to classic WoW. Yeah, I wonder if they, it's like a manual thing. No, like, like you could, ju I don't know, like maybe they can just, you know, copy paste it over maybe. and it's good to go. Uh -huh. No problem, just fits in perfectly. I don't know. Um, if they can, that would explain like why they might feel confident in not having a beta or an alpha, right? Um, they, they, they legitimately might feel like they don't need to have one. I also think it's probably a legitimate concern. I was talking to my stream the last couple of days about this. Um, like it's probably a concern of theirs that having an alpha or a beta would kill the hype. Like I know if I was a Twitch viewer and I had, and I was watching streamers stream classic wow for two or three weeks, they level to 60, they might do upper black or expire, maybe kill Ragnaros on the beta. Like that would probably kill my hype. A little that bit. would, that would make, that would make classic launch feel less epic for me. So they're probably worried about that. I, I do think you're right, Esfan. I think we need to have like a stress test where they test like maybe sharding and dynamic stuff and stuff like that, just just to see what's up or how many players can a can an unaltered vanilla mm -hmm. world with just the normal static response accommodate. How many players can that world accommodate reasonably? Back in the day, mm -hmm. it was two and a half thousand. Can it do three thousand? Three and a half, four, five. Um, I think that stress tests are probably important where they're testing those variables. But like I I would understand why they wouldn't do an alpha or a beta even though i selfishly want one i want one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly Here, here's the I, thing uh, go, go ahead cozy go ahead oh no i i agree with stay safe um i was just thinking about like last year at this time i think i, I was playing the bfa alpha and bfa came out in august so if we're looking at like the latest in august release date for classic um i i, I don't see any kind of alpha coming out for it um a beta too yeah I, I think it would kill the hype too um even for people who maybe aren't streamers and they get beta access and they just want to try it out that could be a hype killer too like they try it out and they're like oh, shit i didn't get to play the demo but i'm playing the beta and i, I don't think this is for me or just like kind of pop and burst in the bubble a bit um so yeah yeah mm -hmm. maybe like a stress test or something uh, i definitely agree with that like test the capacity some sort of stress testing or like phase testing right where it's like okay mm -hmm. like we're gonna do this and you have pre-made characters or something right you have pre-made characters and it like really make it almost boring testing right don't make it to where like you have the full-blown game because if you if you're trying to not kill the hype right i don't here's the thing i don't think you're particularly going to kill the hype per se because look at it this way Look at the BFA. Uh, look at the BFA beta, BFA alpha. That didn't. I mean, that didn't kill the BFA hype, right? Oh, it did. I did. Well, I mean, there's still it was still top of Twitch for a few. No, yeah, you know what uh, I mean? Like people, yeah. people thought it was going to be bad, but that's that's how I met you, S fan, right? I think so. Was yeah. it the alpha or the beta? I think it was the beta. I think it was. I think it was early. Yeah, it was like early the alpha. On. I don't know. It was, yeah, it was something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think here's here's thing. another thing. Uh, the classic demo uh, that we saw during and after BlizzCon was essentially a stress test of sorts, right? You know, it was 15 and 19. It was in it was in Westfall and, and the Barons. Like, who knows how many variables they tested amongst their, like, 20 different servers? Who knows what they tested that we don't know they tested, right? Each server could have had a little bit of uh, different variables or caps or, you know what I mean? Like, who knows? Or, or degrees to which there was sharding or thresholds for sharding. You know what I mean? So... I'm sure they tested a lot during that demo phase that we don't even know about. I think they might be, yeah. All kinds of back end information that we're unaware of. Yeah. Yeah, all right. kinds of back end analytics. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe I think... the testing has already happened. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think um yeah, I, I think it'd be really good. I think it'd be really good to do that. But I mean there's people who have like streamed private servers and like it hasn't been on a large scale, right? But like stay safe, you and I have been there, you know, in the past, right, before the announcement and then you know, with the ban and whatnot. Um, so it's like people have done it before, but uh, like, okay, I thought I cut my hand for a second. I'm going to put this down. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't play with knives. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, it's it's definitely there. Like, if people really wanted to see it, then, then it would be out there. I, I think it's there's something special about it being real. You know what I mean? Um, I think I think it could definitely affect the hype, sure. But uh, I don't think it would all outright kill it or anything. Um 
some sort of stress testing f- focus, like testing phases where it's like, okay, guys, we're going to look at the dungeons, like go through and run dungeons, uh, go through and run raids, something like that. Just boom, boom, boom. Like, r- like let them run the raids, no lockout, something like that. Like, it'd be cool, right? I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe that'll affect the hype negatively, but uh, I think if you made it almost boring, then... Uh, because part of what part of what doing the raids is about is like getting together with your guild and you you know people in your raid and everybody's getting getting together and you're getting your pre-raid bis and you're getting your consumes and buffs and this like there's so much more to it like I remember when I would get up it was raid day okay and and I played sports right I played football and anybody else who who played sports or uh, competed in anything right whenever it's game day, whenever it's time to turn it on, like you wake up that day and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm ready. Like I spend all day like preparing to raid. Like I go and make sure I got all my consumes ready. I make sure, okay, let's go get my world buffs. I mean, this is right. This is right. This is right. And you're almost getting like mentally prepared to go raid. It's, it's the weirdest thing. Cause I, I, I hadn't experienced that since I like had stopped playing football and it was just like, what the hell? Like, this is the strangest thing. Like I, I don't know. It's that's that's a feeling that I would get every raid day, and it felt good. It felt exciting. Um, what sort of football consumes do you have? Like Gatorade and stuff like Gatorade, that. Gatorade. Uh, you know, make sure you get your vitamins. Uh, you know, it's just what it is. Eat your vegetables. It's all good, dude. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of Dragon Breath chili. So, <laughs> but you don't want to get you don't want to get hit too hard after eating Dragon Breath chili because it'll come out the wrong end. And that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, especially when you're tackling someone yeah not good not good so uh no yeah i think i think it's good i think it's uh I, I, it's just like a special experience that makes it a little bit different so that's my that's my opinion yeah i mean i i hope that they're also aware you know so when the demo launched for the first day or two you know there were some inconsistencies with the demo and classic wow you know there was like there was like crit rating on gear and the auto attack range and regen rates and there was the slash lfr thing and people really flipped out you know? <laughs> dude the lfr and thing was so funny <laughs> people really lost their minds and of course you know it was, it was unreasonable it was a demo like it was a progress yeah. update but I, I think they also have to be aware that if they launch Classic WoW after not having an alpha or a beta and there are big inconsistencies, people are going to be like, yo, like we told you to have an alpha and a beta. Like, yeah, yeah exactly. If, if you would, if you would let us test this, we could have given feedback. So I, I hope if they choose not to have an alpha or beta that they feel very confident in that decision. Yeah. Yeah, I even agree. something internal, something closed, not to the public or anything like that, just to get some kind of feedback, better than nothing, you know. With you know, that wouldn't hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe they hurt. maybe they have like an NDA, like an an unstreamable. I got, I I know I would do that. Like I mean, it, you think about it. Like there's there's a lot of like. I mean, it, it, I've given up stuff before, right? Like I think if if it was like, <laughs> hey, you know, you can you can help make a positive impact, but you can't stream it. You're under NDA like hell yeah like of course i would do that you know yeah or maybe if, even if it was like a a like special nda where you could like talk about it it's not like a full nda but like you can talk about it but you just can't like record it or stream it or whatever or at least not until uh maybe not until after after the fact or something like that maybe you could like record but you, you can't publish it or whatever um <clears throat> Yeah, sorry, my my guys. Again, for those of you guys who don't know, my I, I was at PAX. Uh, I, I was at PAX this last weekend, and I was like IRL streaming like every day. And whenever I IRL, I talk loudly, and we're in a loud convention. And yeah, that's that's why my voice is gone. And actually, Quissy was there as well, uh, which was pretty cool. We got to we got to go to that WoW panel and stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah that's cool. Very fun, very fun. There was a guy who passed out in the bag, and they thought he was dead. Um, oh god, that was so scary. <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the guy. Okay, so we're we're doing this wow panel. This is just a little side note, and we get up and everybody leaves, and, and there's a guy in the back, just and everyone's like, what's, what's going on? They end up like they they bring the paramedics in, and it's like 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 what are they doing? They go up to him and they try and like, hey hey, and he just wakes, up, huh? Like what's going on? It's like the dude's fine. He just passed out. He was just tired. So I mean, it's just like it happens, you know. So I don't know. I thought it was funny. Just yeah, like, they they like scared us to think he was dead or something. They're like, everybody has to leave now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everybody get out. So that's how Shit. it goes. Yeah. Oh, there's a so, clip. Rixie, Rixie has the clip. There it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But let me, uh, let me ask you guys this. So summer ends technically in late September. It's like September 23rd or late September is the point. Um, let's let's assume it's coming out literally the last day of summer, September whatever. Um, when would we? Get, when do you expect a release date? 
What do you think about that? Um, I think it'll be between July and August. I mean, there's the whole like tinfoil hat conspiracy July 16th thing. But I think, given everything that we have so far, I do think it could be between July and August. Like, it could end up happening. The release. The release, yeah. Yeah. Do you mean yeah. the release announcement, Stacey, or do you mean the release I mean, itself? when when are they going to give us a release date? Yeah. So oh, if, give if, us a release if date. The game, oh. If the game is releasing late September, like, how much, how, how many weeks or months in advance will they give us a date to prepare? What do you think? Month and um, a half. Yeah, isn't it usually isn't it usually like a month for WoW expansions? I don't know. Well, I think like, I think like a, I think like a month and a half from now. It's a couple of months usually. It's several months, yeah. I think I think we will get a date before June. We would, like, we would I, have to, right? I think I think yeah. we're gonna have a date probably this month. I yeah, really think that. I think I think um, probably this month and and more than likely before June. And it's weird that that July Osconti the 16th thing is like pretty you know tinfoil hat, but it's, it's weird just funny. Yeah. At this point, that's the time frame I expect to see the game out. Yeah, I, just regardless. Post, yeah, just regardless. There was the blue post where they were talking about uh, I think bug fixes since the classic demo, and they ended it by saying, "Thank you and get ready for a classic summer." And like, I don't want to look into it too much, but to me, that indicates like we'll be playing it during summer rather than like in the last day of summer, right? So, right, a classic summer. So, I, I think probably mid July. That's what I would expect for a full release. But who, mm. who, who knows, dude? Who knows? July fourth. Yeah. Freedom, <laughs> freedom from the tyranny of private servers, dude. July fourth, mm. a Tuesday. That's a Thursday. Would... July second. <laughs> that, of course. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna guess sometime in August, just because. Um, I mean, sooner the better. Don't get me wrong, but um, I'm thinking about BFA as well and how they want to space out the content. So 8.2. I don't even know. Is there a release date for 8.2 yet? But that's the next big patch coming out, and. Um, is it, in April? is it like June? I thought it was June. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. End of May, early June, I think, is 8.2. I think, yeah. Okay. So What's 8.2? That's just... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> I was being silly. At BFA. We're talking about a BFA patch and like how, how they would like line up the, the releases and stuff is, is what Quizzy's yeah. talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm basically I'm just saying like I, I don't think they would put them so close together. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any crossover. Like is the classic team completely separate? Or are there is there some crossover between like the retail guys and the classic guys in terms of development and stuff like that? So, um, from from my understanding, is they've got like the WoW team. The, um, they they got the WoW team. There's like an umbrella, right? And this is like retail WoW, and then there's like a little subset which is the the classic WoW team, which is like Brian and Omar and and so on. Like we don't know everybody on the team, but Brian o Brian and Omar are like the the two guys who are heading it up, and they were actually on the retail vanilla team. Back in the day, like you, you, the two guys who were like in charge of making WoW Classic are people who worked on Retail Vanilla WoW. So, mm. yeah, and when we got a chance to meet and talk to them, and they're they're both really really good guys who like genuinely care about doing it right, which is very good to hear. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I guess just like spacing out the the WoW content mm -hmm. as a whole. So if eight point two comes out like early June or. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's a release date, but I feel like they would want to space it out a bit more. Maybe that's just my opinion. I don't know. Right. Yeah, and I think Super that's something better. that like uh, that's something that Sakar talked about too. Is like uh, at, at least as far as like patch cycles and stuff goes. Like this is later on down the road, where it's kind of natural for them to like alternate, even if it's not like perfect. Like it, it's kind of natural for them to alternate, and uh, yeah. they they probably would typically like not want to have two things too close to each other. Um, mm. 100%. They're gonna space it out a little bit. Yeah, so that, that would make sense. Yeah um, <clears throat> Now we still we, we still have some uh, we still have a little bit more to talk about but real quick guys if you haven't yet uh, Please 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 go follow go follow tips out go follow stay safe go follow quissy quissy is our friend Who's a part of our classic crew, which is our, our little stream team that we put together of uh, people who've been uh, supportive of us and, and just good friends and fans of classic so uh please 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 go follow them their names are on the screen uh and and also if you if you haven't followed me yet as well uh i go. would appreciate a follow i'm going to continue streaming after this uh and like i said we we still have stuff to talk about but youtube twitch uh twitter all that stuff is, is right there on the screen um 
Oh, th there's no TV after my YouTube. I just noticed that. But oh, oh my bad. Yeah, it's, it's just Quissy on YouTube. Figured out. Yeah. Yeah, it's just Quissy on YouTube. <laughs> good, you can search. Good. And actually, you just did a video, Quissy. I, I saw on your Twitter you just did a video, kind of recapping a lot of the uh, the changes and stuff that have happened. Uh, for for yeah, not, yeah. not changes, sorry, announcements and stuff that have happened. Changes, dance game, no, no, uh, the announcements <laughs> and stuff that have happened uh, over the course of the last month. So you guys should go check that out on her YouTube channel as well. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, absolutely. So yeah, let's let's talk about uh, <clears throat> one more thing, right? You know, talking about predictions and other things that we want to hear about going forward. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about right click reporting. Um, and, and I would say yeah. not just right-click reporting, I think that's something that's come up a little bit, but the general chat features and the chat functionality of BFA and and uh, yeah. Retail WoW right now, right? Because if you're taking the 735 base client and you're you're downporting it to what Vanilla WoW is or what Vanilla WoW is supposed to be, uh, there's like a little bit of stuff that's kind of carried over. One of which is right-click reporting that they want to keep in the game for reasons that they've said, like they don't have the big robust GM team that they used to have. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> But on top of that, the like mute functionality and uh, like like if you type like I think more than three lines and like I don't know the exact number, but I know because I'm a gamer and I've gamed for a lot of years and I'm sure a lot of you guys have done this as well. You have your hands on your keyboard and mouse, you're playing, and then all of a sudden, like you need to type something. This was before maybe voice chat for some of you for some of you old boys and girls, like before you had vent all the time or Discord or whatever. If I wanted to type something, I would do something and then like, you know what I mean? Did that make any sense? I'm playing and then I go and I type real fast, like one line, and then I go back to playing, type the second line, keep playing, type third line, keep playing. And that's like developed my my typing habits. And I always type like this in everything now, where as soon as my thought finishes in my head, I hit, I hit enter. So... Yeah, that's how I was talking all the time. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just kind of how it goes. So what ends up happening is if I try and type in trade chat and retail, well, I get muted like every time because I, I, I hit enter like it's like a conscious stream of thought, like whenever I'm typing. So in BFA, you don't have to type. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, you can't. So, so that's kind of how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, yeah the, I do. The problem, the problem I agree. is the functionality you brought up limits player interaction, and that's less of a problem in Retail WoW and more of a problem in Classic WoW. Classic WoW is like an entirely different beast, beast when it comes to player interaction and what it takes to be successful uh, in Classic WoW. Like you really have to negotiate and, and communicate and stuff like that, where in Retail WoW it's much less important. Um, I, I think with right click reporting, like the issue is not necessarily the functionality of, right, of being able to right click report someone, it's the automated response. The automated response of squelching someone for 24 hours um, and having ha having having that punishment um, executed prior to an actual human reviewing their reports is a big issue. Like that's mm -hmm. a very big problem. And so, like I know I know just like saying right click report is a problem. Like I, that's like a very simple way to put it. Yeah, like, like obviously. Yeah, if if right click reporting is there, like it's fine. You just can't. You really it's can't. Everything else classic wow have the automated response that's the real issue mm -hmm. it, it's it's the response or the reaction from the right click report that's a big issue yeah. because like we've, we've talked about this a million times you know if you if if it's pre-made was pre-made and your pre-made spam right click reports a the pre-made leader of the opposing pre-made that's a big issue um you know if if if, if you right click report the gm and every officer of an of an opposing guild and they can't invite people to their raid or do raid warnings or whisper people in their raid that's a big issue mm -hmm. and i guarantee that will be abused so that has to be something that's looked at and like solutions that were implemented in retail well right click reporting automated response aut automated uh punishments you know mm -hmm. squelching for 24 hours uh like, like these tools that are in retail wow um because classic and retail are just so different like it's not necessarily the right solution for classic wow so i i think that they have to look at that stuff and really be uh like really be critical of, of things like that mm -hmm. and i i have i i'll say this on top of that i have faith in their ability to look at that and rectify these issues after what they did with with uh, loot trading like hmm. I, I think they're being very, very receptive. I think the loot trading was a pretty good compromise, and yeah. I think that they'll come to something similar um, with right click reporting. Yeah, I think so too. Definitely agreed, dude. I think even then, like even if you could like right click somebody's name and report them, at least open up a window and make them type something. Like, why do you want to report this guy? Because I, I think that's like a big problem too. Like, 
I can tell you firsthand, I've done this in League of Legends. I've done this in, in Retail WoW, or, or not in Retail WoW, but in Retail Vanilla, where I got pissed at somebody, and I like I click the thing, I click the question mark, and I go and I scroll, and I find a reason, you know, click report, type out your thing, and I start typing out what I want to type out, and I'm like, you know what, this is cumbersome, and I'm over it at this point. Like, I, I have like the 30 seconds or a minute to kind of like cool off, and then I'm like, I don't even care anymore, I'm not gonna report this guy, whatever, move on, mm. it's not that big of a deal. But I think like this whole like, it's just so soft, like trigger happy right click reporting people, it's, it's so soft. Like, I, I don't know. I, I just think it's like, it's a huge problem for everybody. And it just like kills well, the game experience. It's, 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 it's like a shift in mindset. And maybe this is reflective of society. Like back in the day, back in, you know, vanilla WoW, if someone was annoying you, your response was to ignore them. You just ignore them and you moved on. And the whole like premise of right click reporting is rather than a defensive action, ignoring someone, it's a, it's a, it's an offensive action, right? Right. Where you're, where you're trying to punish someone rather than just ignoring them. Um, and like, that's the big problem with it. You know, I, I, I think that, I think that, uh, <laughs> dude, I, I, I think that, um, in, anyway, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> sorry, dude, it happens. Sorry, yeah, yeah, it happens. Sorry. No, no, no. I, I know, I know what you mean though. It's like, it's, it's whenever you're going through and like, it ends up being like people are, people are like reporting people maliciously. Like they're not reporting somebody for a legitimate reason. They're reporting them because they, they yeah. want their you know, guy to disconnect out of a, you know, you're going pre-made versus pre-made. You got two bracket one pre-mades going against each other. Like, oh man, like I do not want to go and I want, I do not want to sit in a 20 minute AB. Uh, let's just a spam report and see if we can get somebody kicked. Okay. Somebody got kicked. And then, then we win cause it's 15 v 14, you know? Hmm. Yeah. So I, 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 I completely agree with that. <clears throat> it it kind of reminds me, like I, I play a moon guard, not, not by choice. Um, I moved there because of a guild, but uh, we were hanging out in the brawlers guild last night and you know, I love moon guard because it's a very active community. There's always people around. Um, Stormwind is always crowded. Uh, so it, it's, it's kind of got like a really strong community and I like that, but uh, we were hanging out in the brawlers guild and there were like, maybe like four or five people just hanging out to the side, like commenting on the matches. And if somebody lost, they, you know, they were like trash talking a little bit um, or like, you know, saying you're bad, mm -hmm. shit like that. And most of us were just ignoring them. Um, my one friend like engaged with one of them and they ended up going back and forth a little bit. And they were like, oh, you want to duel outside? Like, I don't know. It just kind of it reminded me of vanilla in a way. Like yeah. it, just, it just had that classic feel to it. <laughs> Or like you, you could either choose to ignore them or engage them. Right. So, I love. And I've played on Kel'Zad since Vanilla, not the beginning of Vanilla, but but late Vanilla. Uh, if it wasn't for that and the fact that at this point I have like friends there and that's just where I've played, and I think it's cool to play on the same server the whole time. If if it wasn't for that, I told they would be playing on Moonguard. Like it, it's. Uh, I I didn't really like care. You know, I was like whatever before, but mm -hmm. after playing on Moonguard for Project Sixty. And uh, you know we, we do like the projects oh, yeah, and we'll do them yeah. there. And some people in the pro in the in the role play community do not like it because all the spurks come in. But I've had people tell me too. It's like, dude, you know, you know, it, a lot of people do complain about What's this. What's wrong with spurks? <laughs> like the the reality <laughs> of it is the reality of it is is that it livens up the server, right? And Absolutely. I mean the the server is I mean it's already pretty good. Like you compare it to everything else. Like I I notice way more people engaging in conversation. Uh, I notice way more people engaging in uh, other kinds of uh, conduct as well on Moonguard, but uh, it's just it's just a lot more it's it's a lot more lively of a community, uh, and I think it's cool. I don't know. I, I it is, yeah. it is it is very vanilla like. So. I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Very very good. So, uh, guys, again, like I said earlier, please, please, please uh, follow Tips Out, follow Stay Safe, follow Quissy. Everything is, is right there on the screen. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, of course. Everybody streams. Everybody's going to be streaming Classic whenever Classic comes out, of course. Um, I'm going to be streaming after this. And uh, here in a second, I, I, think, uh, I think here in a second we're going to go ahead and go to uh, do a little bit of Q&A because I know we, we don't have too much time left. But uh, we want to do some Q&A before we go. Uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and tweet at us. Go ahead and tweet at TipsOutBaby, at SVAND, at StaySafeWarlock, at Quissy, and, and put the hashtag ClassicCast on it because that's what I'm going to be searching here on my phone. Uh, we'll take some questions out of the chat as well. Um, yeah, people, people have been asking. 
uh, some questions throughout the throughout the time, but I, I really haven't had the time to, uh, or we really haven't been able to. It, it's it's not easy to go back and forth, right? We want to talk about our thing, and then we want to go do the Q and A. So, where can I join your guild? Oh, uh, actually, yeah. So, Water Laws, uh, all of us at this point, all three of us, Tip, Stay Safe, and I, we all have our guild applications out at this point. So, um, the general idea is that Tips is going to be playing Horde on an NA PvP server. Uh, Stay Safe is going to be playing. NA PvP Alliance, so am I. Uh, we're all going to be on the same server. Same server. Yeah, we're all going to be on the same server. And uh, yeah, that's how we're going to do it. So so Tips will be playing Horde. We will be playing Alliance. Uh, if you guys are interested in playing with us, if you guys are interested in playing with me, I mean, you should you should definitely check out their streams. And uh, I know I know in my stream, there's a command exclamation point guild should work. My guild app is up right now. If you guys are interested in joining my guild, it takes you to my Discord. You can join the Discord, ask any questions in there very active community um that'll be in the uh on youtube for those of you guys watching this on youtube this will be down in the description below the video as well so you guys can can join get involved uh you can join my guild go into stay safe chat join his guild go into tips chat you can join his guild you can apply to his guild and uh actually stay safe you're doing a meeting you're doing a guild meeting tonight after class yeah aren't you? If, if you go to my twitch channel do exclamation point guild uh, there'll be a link to my guild discord we're actually having my officer team and myself have prepared, prepared a pretty big presentation going mm -hmm. over expectations for the guild and socials and raiders and goals and things like that so we're going to have a big uh, meeting after this in about an hour mm -hmm. so that'll be that'll be pretty cool too um i i just released mine today so i just released mine today and tips has also had his out for quite some time now um so yeah, let me go ahead and look at Twitter real quick. We're going to uh, get some of these questions in. Um, and I think this is a really good one. This is from a real badger. Since Twitch wasn't around during the days of vanilla, what kind of impact do you think the new age of streamers is going to have on Classic WoW? I think one of the biggest things that we're going to see from people streaming Classic is the impact on like server population and just like the the sheer volume of people who are watching some of these streamers this isn't necessarily the case for us right but uh it is the case for some of the bigger guys there's guys who are coming from outside of the wow section coming back to classic a lot of people have had wow as a big part of their lives whether it's somebody like tim or shroud or summit or you know whether it's guys who you know are more popular and like known for wow like you know asmin and, and soda pop right um a lot of people are going to be coming back and a lot of people are going to be, uh, you know, I guess new in the WoW section. I mean, those guys have streamed WoW before, but not as their main thing or anything. So it's going to be very interesting to see. I think it could have a really big impact on server population. Uh, it could bring some spurgs. I know some people are saying to avoid streamer servers. Uh, I think that the biggest thing is, um, I think the biggest thing that's going to happen, and this is something that's inevitable, is people are going to be streaming wherever you're at. Like, there's going to be bigger streamers and smaller streamers everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so like you're you're not gonna be able to avoid people streaming. Um, I think just because of the nature of how the game works, like it's gonna be hard. Like there's some things that you can't do on stream. Like whenever I streamed before, whenever I streamed private servers, I don't think I streamed more than like, I think the most I ever streamed in a week was like five days. And nowadays I stream almost, like it's rare for me to miss a day. And I, I have like an anxiety attack if I miss two days. So, so like, it's it's gonna be different in classic a little bit. Like there there you might not be able to stream classic WoW every single day just because there's gonna be things you have to do off stream, um, especially if you're like in leadership, right? Like I, I ran my guild before, so like I would have to go and do officer meetings or loot council stuff and whatnot. So it, it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be pretty interesting, and uh, and also it might be kind of like a passive watching experience for a lot of people. Like if you're playing, then you might have it up in the second monitor and like listen to it almost like, like I mean probably like now like a lot of you guys watching right now are probably you know, playing a game or, you know, whether it's WoW or another game, you're probably just playing and listening in the background, right? Uh, and, and that's the nature of how, like, podcasts and a lot of people who watch streams work. So that, that, that was kind of like a extensive answer. Do you guys want to add to that at all? Yeah, I, 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 I guess I understand the concern with being on, like, a giant streamer server. Um, I think it'll be an issue if... if if there's only one giant personality. Like, if, it, if it's a monoculture server... Um, where you have everyone in trade chat posting like, oh, this streamer got this item. Oh, like, well, you know what I mean? Like, I could understand how that could be annoying. I'll say that yeah. for our server, the tips out, Quissy, S Fawn, Stay Safe, you know, all, all of all of the names you'd expect, Prom, you know, mm -hmm. Payo, like everyone that you expect to be on our server is going to be on the server. Yeah. Um, there's going to be so many names in the hat and there's a million other small people. Like, I know so many people who don't stream now 
or are very small streamers that want to start streaming yeah. classic WoW, and they can't stream private services. They're just kind of chilling. Um, so many people. You're, yeah, as as There's hard as you streamers might try, everywhere. You, you will not escape. Yeah. You will not mm -hmm. escape streamers. And in fact, probably every server will have one or two streamers rise to the ranks, um, become a large streamer for that server, because people on that server will want to watch the streamer on their server. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Even That's if you have been... a big streamer going in, you'll have big streamers created for that server that will rise up. So you yeah. won't be able to escape them. Long story short, sorry. Yeah, exactly. that, that's kind of what happened with me, like with uh, like Elysium Lightbringer, because I you know just like streaming consistently, whatever. And it was like funny to watch my streams because it was like, are they, are they gonna pull this off? <laughs> like it, it kind of became a meme, right? So like, but it was it, it was just funny. So that's it's, it's something very natural to happen. Is that uh, you know people are going to happen to find somebody to watch and you know what i like watching this so and sometimes sometimes it's like a flash in a pan type thing like where you know somebody's streaming and and you can see this in the world first race too you see guys with 20,000 views 15,000 views and then the raid's over and then they're back to like 300 or something which is is a fine number i mean 300 number 300 viewers is a fine number but then you you know it's about the comparison right so you're you're going to see a lot of that i'm sure Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i would say if you're worried about streamers on classic launch i'd say the two biggest worries before that are number one server faction balance and number two population um one thing that streamers do bring to the table is they bring steady population they bring communities especially kind of the more world of warcraft endemic streamers they bring people that aren't going to leave your server and um you know one of the worst things that can happen on any server and i'm sure a lot of you guys have experienced this is you play three months later, you know, 30% of the population leaves, six months later, another 20% leaves, and so on and so forth. That is far more destructive to a community, I think, than bringing a streamer on board or playing on a server with a streamer. So just definitely keep that in mind. Um, yeah, th things can go bad the other way too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think just like with the nature of Classic WoW, if, if there's like people that are orbiting a streamer or want to play with a certain streamer and they, they play on that streamer server, like, if they don't genuinely like Classic WoW and want to engage with Classic WoW and level up and farm and do this and do dungeons, they're not going to make it. Like you, you can't fake playing Classic WoW. You either like it or you don't. Um, it, it's it's like it's a very big investment to be successful in Classic WoW. And so you might you might have those like sort of uh, what are they called tourist gamers that are come they're just sort of following their favorite streamer. Um, and they might be there for a couple of days and it'll be funny for, on streams of like a mass swarm of players following this guy around. But you know, like within within a couple of days, I think there's going to be like though those people that just like fall streamers wherever they go, those people are going to die off. And like the the real classic gamers, I, I don't want to like gatekeep, but you like the people that actually want to play classic. Wow, they'll stick around. Is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and gatekeeping is a whole other uh, gatekeeping is a whole other issue too. I think with like, and that's just like something that in the in the classic community you see a lot of gatekeeping and stuff. That's why like I know like you're trying to like you're not trying to gatekeep by like saying it, but it's a thing that comes up, right? And it, it's like kind of like a slippery slope, I guess, where it's like you, you know, people are like, oh, well, like you want this or you want that. And then all of a sudden, like people go and they're like, they end up just like gatekeeping and saying, you know, so it's, it's, it's that's just kind of like a whole thing. <coughs> um, what do you guys think about uh, the potential of stream sniping? Like we're, we're oh, all going to be on the same server, PVP server. Yeah, pe yeah. I mean, people are going uh, to stream snipe. I mean, that's just how it is. Like it, the thing is here. So here's the thing with stream sniping. Like it's kind of like spurgy behavior and mm. it, it's almost like lose lose a lot of times. Right. If, if unless you kill them, like let's say let's say you go up in a straight up one v one. Right. And it's like if they're not prepared or they're not doing, you know, they're, they're not doing their thing and you go up and like try and snipe them. It's like, and you happen to kill them. It's like, okay, yeah, but like the guy was like you know, half health. He wasn't prepared, like whatever, right? And then you have like a situation where if you go and then he beats you, then you look like a moron, right? So then let's say you yeah. go and you, you have your crew and you go like with three people and kill one guy or two people and try and kill one guy and you kill him and it's like, who cares? Like, obviously you killed him. You outnumbered him like severely. But then like if you happen to lose or if he outsmarts you, then you look like a moron, right? So it, it ends up being like really lose. Like it's very... It's, it's a very specific situation, I think, like, whenever people stream sniping it, like, it's actually like, okay, well, yeah, he, he whooped his ass, like, you know what I mean? A lot, a lot of time it ends up looking bad, so, I don't know, it's gonna happen anyway, but it, it's just something funny, and then people know, right? They'll see him, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, that's that jackass, so, and then they'll think mm. you suck, and then if you suck, you know what I mean? It's it's like a whole thing, so. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there. I mean, there are definitely things that you can do to minimize the, the like the the impact that stream sniping has in your gameplay if you are a streamer. But it can definitely be annoying. I mean, what it, like at the end of the day, if it really is like a huge problem for you and you, and you can't you can't adjust to it, like the ultimate option is just turn off your stream. And like no no one like that's not ideal. But if that's really what it comes down yeah. to, then I or play PVE, you do. or play PVE, like there there's or play PVE. Yeah, there's 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 situations where. You know, like you don't want to stream like you're getting world buffs, or you're running into Black Rock Mountain, or you're doing a world boss, and you, you might have to have a delay or a call for, let's say, you know, in your 40-man raid group, you might have, you know, six or seven people that are streaming. You need to say, all right, everyone cover your streams for, for 10 minutes. That's what it is. And like yeah. viewers, viewers are going to have to understand that. Like that's just the nature of Classic WoW. Classic WoW is not the most uh, stream-friendly game of all time, but yeah. there's definitely a lot you can do that's, that's really fun stream content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the content is fun, but it's not particularly stream friendly. That's a really good way of putting it. Cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, f I feel like in BFA, I, I half half the time if I'm streaming, I'm just hanging out in town, like talking to people. So it's, yeah. like, yeah. like, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, like mm -hmm. running an instance or just hanging out in town. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think classic is gonna be uh, it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be interesting to to stream that, yeah. There will sure. be challenges, and there will be points when each of us are extremely freaking frustrated. <laughs> I, I yeah. guarantee that. Um, I see a question here from Patrick. Uh, yes or no to paid server transfers? I remember it was a feature before the release of TBC. So yeah, I think it was in one twelve or one eleven they added server transfers. Um, mm. It was only from you 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 could only go PVP to PVP or PVP to PVE. You couldn't go PVE to PVP because they didn't want people leveling up on PVE servers and getting gear and transferring to PVP servers and world PVP. Like yeah, so, yeah, there, there was some like transfer integrity. I remember there also being I I want to say it was like a six month character transfer cooldown. You could only transfer <laughs> one character once every six months. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what the cooldown was, but there was one. Yeah, but, I did it. But prior, you did it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did it and. Uh, I think it was like September, October. It was after the next patch is whenever I did it. I think I did a free transfer. I can't remember, but I, I yeah. was I was Alliance Illidan, then I went to Alliance well, Kel'Thuzad after the next so, patch. So prior to the paid character transfers, it was very regular. They had high pop to low pop character transfers. Mm -hmm. um, th that was common from like just like the first couple months of, of Vanilla WoW. But uh, yeah, the paid transfers came in later. I think that if I think that if they're going to do them, it, it needs to be late classic WoW as they were in Vanilla WoW. And uh, they need they need to have that same like transfer integrity where you can't go you can't be like decked on a PVE server and transfer to a PVP server and just stomp kids and strangle from Veil because that's that's just lame you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta I, earn that right to stomp kids. Well, like I, I remember they, they didn't want people to. Uh, this was like sp I specifically remember reading this and and I mean I don't know maybe maybe Kevin Jordan or somebody can correct me if I'm wrong but I, I very specifically remember. Like Blizzard coming out and saying they didn't want people to like be, I think it was they didn't want people like who who used to play on a PvP server or PVE server to go play on a PvP server and then complain about their transfer and like whine about it because they're getting ganked and stuff because they're not used to it. I I I'm I maybe I'm crazy, but old Blizzard Pepe, <laughs> it's like I remember them saying like they didn't want to have people be babies about it, but I can't quite remember it. So. Yeah, very good. Yeah, no, oh, there I, he is. He's, he's there in chat. There you go, Kevin Jordan. Yes, that was the thing. There you go. So yeah, nice. very confirmed. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is. It is pretty interesting. Um, I just my phone just turned off. I had the other question. Um, now, uh, in, ahead, a, in, in, in a similar vein, name changes. I don't, and I, I'm open to being wrong. I don't think name changes were in vanilla WoW. Uh, only server transfers, and so I am. I don't like name changes because your name mm -hmm. carries such a reputation in vanilla WoW and classic WoW. Um, let's say you ninja an item, or you know you, you're a dick and the entire server hates you. Okay, name change, gotta go. And then you're yeah. a new guy. And you, yeah. So I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. So. Yeah, agreed. And, and yeah, one of you transfer like that's probably gonna happen if somebody has your name already. You're gonna have to change your name. Yeah. But but like in a paid name transfer situation, like you don't wanna have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, well, yeah. So I, 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 yeah. So just, just to clarify, name changes <coughs> included in realm transfers. I'm talking same realm, no realm transfer name change. Mm -hmm. That's what I don't like. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I had a friend. I had a friend in vanilla who, uh, he, I man. Okay, so I, I don't want to, I don't want to give him away, but uh, he was a well-known rogue on the server, in uh, on Keldazad, leaves, transfers to another server, comes back to Keldazad afterwards with a different name. And I remember whenever I saw him, 
because he just disappeared outright and he he was kind of a meme he really good player insanely good player but he was also kind of a meme just because he was a troll and a jackass i love him but that's just what he was i saw his character and i saw his character's face i swear to god i swear to god this is real and and you know maybe maybe someday he can he can attest to it but i see his character's face his character model and i whisper this guy who's always are you are you so and so and he's just like and because we were friends before he was just like, uh, dot, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I was like, it was just the weirdest thing. Like the fact that I saw somebody's character model and I recognized them. But he literally transferred off and transferred back and changed his name just to basically clear his name, clear his reputation, just like total bastard. But yeah, that's a that's a real thing. So was it Ming? I don't know. No, it was not Ming. I'm not saying who it was, but it was not Ming. Um, so yeah. That uh that happened on uh that that happened on Keldazad, so yeah let's let's go ahead and take we're we're only gonna take a few more questions here guys uh because because we do have to get going, um, and uh, I, I think this is a good one. What percentage of classic players do you believe will be made up of private server players? Do you think it'll be a majority or a minority? This is from Araxis. so That's I think. I think it's a really good question, and I think it's going to be the overwhelming minority of players who are, are probably like private server players, right? People have been playing on private servers for a long time or playing on private servers before the classic announcement. Um, just because, like, think about how, like, having the game be, like, retail now, having the game be accessible to, like, everybody, you know, you just your sub, whatever. Uh, you don't have to go and download something through, uh, you know, some kind of... Uh, torrent and you have to go and set up a name on like a third party thing and I, I uh, like an account on a third party thing I think that it makes it more accessible to people whenever it's retail and I think there's going to be a lot of non-private server players that uh, that are that are playing classic that's what I think especially in NA for sure yeah especially like, in NA yeah. yeah especially in NA yeah like yeah. the vast majority of private servers are composed of EU and, and East Asia and stuff like that like in NA it's it's gonna be freaking minuscule. How, how big would you say the NA private server community is? How many people do you? It's not that big compared to EU. Compared to EU, it's not that big because especially on oh, yeah, NA, yeah. like you have a lot more latency compared to it's, EU because all the servers are on yeah. EU. It might be like a one fourth ratio or something like that. You know, it's definitely NA players are definitely a minority. Mm -hmm. And I, I think private servers as a whole, especially NA, like they're like less less than three percent of classic wow players will probably have a private server history like mm -hmm. for real i think they're going to be an extreme minority extreme minority um I, I think i think most people playing classic wow will be a mix of people coming back that haven't that have been totally checked out for a while mm -hmm. and then also a lot of retail players that are trying it out yeah i think a lot of people who never played classic before a lot of people who never played classic yeah. before or maybe they started playing at the end of classic and they didn't get to finish i think yeah. that's that's a big mm -hmm. thing on a lot of people's lists is like they want to go through and they want to finish I went and I did MC. I went and I did BWL, but I never got to go do Nax, right? That's what that's what a lot of people are probably saying. Or like, I I started leveling, but I didn't get to hit level sixty before vanilla finished, right? I think that's what a lot of people want to see uh, the, a chance to get to go back and like finish the job. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> this is one for I me. See, uh... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, this one's just for me. Are you going to continue S Fan IRL and maybe include tips and stay safe once Classic comes back out? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, I will. I will be continuing S Fan IRL. Uh, I've got some plans for S Fan IRL. So yeah. Oh, thank God we got that cleared up. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. Uh, did, you, did you have one? Stay safe. There was one here. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty quick one. I got a okay. question for you guys. Do you think achievement should achievement should be a thing in Classic? Well. I think absolutely not, and uh, I am I'm thankful that the classic team feels the same way. Yeah, no achievements. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's agreed. What I'm saying too. Yeah. It's something as awesome as like getting like the winter spring frost saber mount, like just being able to like show that off in town, like that's an achievement right there. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I have to disagree personally. I, I have to disagree. Uh, I think achievements was is probably the best feature ever implemented in the history mm -hmm. of WoW to track your actual accomplishments. Before that, there was there was no way. I mean, yeah. there was no way. I, I could not flex my, my 30,000 achievement points, um, you know, in, in Ironforge. So I... 
Well, hey. I can't even fake it, dude. I can't even fake it, dude. Who would ask that question, honestly? Really? Hey, well, here's, really? Yeah. here's the oh, thing. Clash of Cash 26, like, man. Come on, dude. Here, Wake hey, up. Listen, like listen, listen. I, I think, here's I think the thing. one of the great things about Vanilla WoW is that it's sort of like a playable create your own adventure book, right? Where you, you define your own fun, you define your own adventure, you define your own accomplishments. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think it, having, having achievements where it, it's like an actual metric of things you've done, I think really undermines that, mm -hmm. that, like, that create your own adventure gameplay style. Right. And hey, I mean, you know, speaking of achievements being good, like it made it made a whole career for Asmongold. So <laughs> there's there's that. No, I, I think uh, the as far as gameplay implications of achievements goes, I think you if you have achievements in the game, this is something that I remember from whenever I, I quit for a while and I came back for Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, oh, he's here. Okay, good. What's up, dude? <laughs> so yeah, um, he knows. He'll tell you. So. Basically, what uh, whenever I quit and I came back, I remember link your achievement. What's your gear score? And all of a sudden, it's like oh Jesus Christ, dude! I, how am I supposed to get the, the freaking achievement if I if I you know if I haven't run it? If you're not gonna invite me, how am I gonna get the achievement? And it's just like this whole like, yeah. dude, you gotta be freaking kidding me! Like it it, mm -hmm. it just it, it blows my mind. Like all all that stuff, it's it's antithetical to what classic is. Uh, achievements, yeah. all that stuff. Uh, you should just be able to go and and your character. Whenever you right click inspect, whenever you look at a guy, that's your character story right there. Uh, the stuff that you can talk about as opposed to the stuff on a sheet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that that like play reputation and like okay, what guild is this guy in? What's his name? Have I leveled with him? Have I done a pre made with him? Has he been in a random battleground with me? Have I seen him around town? You know, shit talking or trolling people, or is he a ninja looter? Have I seen people complain about him being a ninja looter? Look at his gear. Is he itemizing correctly? Does he have proper enchants? Does, is he level 60 and does he have a, an epic mount or not? You know, what what sort of epic mount does he have? Is, does he have a rank 11 PvP mount? Mm -hmm. It's like all, all these What are his test actually, levels? What are his testosterone levels? Yeah, give me your blood work <laughs> and stuff like that. Like all these things factor into whether or not you would want to play with someone. Like if, if mm -hmm. I'm, or if her I'm test levels. Little, or her test levels, yes. yes progressive. You know, um, need to have very high testosterone. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm if I'm standing in Ironforge and I'm trying to make a little grub pug, and like a priest, a priest approaches me, and he has strength and chance. Like I'm not gonna bring him with me, right? And you, you, I really like that in classical, you sort of have to make like virtual eye to eye, eye contact with someone. They have to come up and slash poke you. You look, you look at them. They look at you. You know, let's say someone's advertising a old grub pug or a molten corp pug, and I go up and I approach them. I'm like, yeah, maybe I want to come to this. And the guy leading the thing is a dumbass. Like, okay, I don't want to go to that pug anymore. You know what I mean? So it, it goes both ways. Yeah. Um, and having just like okay link me your achievement have you done this raid before link me your achievement or link me or let me look at your gear score like that that really undermines that that like actual like virtual eye contact you have to make with someone you actually have to look at them and, and look them up and down that's really important mm -hmm. i completely agree squad w I, I think i think all that's really really important um guys i think on that note i think this was a great class cast i think we had a lot of fun today Please, 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 if you haven't already, please go follow Tips. Please go follow Stay Safe. Please go follow Quissy. We're, we're out of time. Stay Safe has got to go to his guild meeting. If you're interested in joining Stay Safe's guild, go into his chat, exclamation point guild, and you can do his guild application. Uh, tips, he has his guild application. I have my guild application out, exclamation point guild, in this chat. If you're interested, just brand new today, just put out the, uh, the guild application. Please go follow Quissy. Um, Quissy is, is a part of our classic crew. And uh, also very, very excited for Classic WoW. She'll be playing a Holy Paladin come Classic and is doing Classic WoW content on her channel as well. So, guys, again, thank you so much. And uh, I will be continuing my stream uh, here in a few minutes after after a quick little break. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you guys next time. Yep. Nice. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks thank for you. Thank you. Thank you.